2023, actually the best year I've ever had. January 1st, I had 887 subscribers, and now at the end of the year, we're at around 440k, which is just mind-blowing. I was finishing up college when I started this channel, and man, I'm so glad this worked out, because making videos is probably the best quote-unquote job, and I know it seems silly to call this a job, but this is the only quote-unquote job that I think would make me happy. So I appreciate all of you so much, even if you're not subscribed. I'm just glad people, you know, get to see the videos. I made a longer video on my second channel where I just kind of ramble about the end of year, really. So if you're into that, you can check it out. But I made a lot of shorts in 2023, as this is the only year I made shorts. So this video is a compilation of every short I've ever made all in one video. So thank y'all for making this year great, and I hope y'all enjoy seeing my first ever videos and see how they've changed over time. I just came across the most bizarre realization. Protection 5 was never in Minecraft, which I just can't believe. I mean, I remember it so vividly, and so do plenty of other players. I even came across Reddit posts of other Minecraft players saying they remember getting Protection 5 armor by combining two pieces of Protection 4 armor in an anvil, something I also remember. So it turns out that this in fact was a feature, but it was only a mod slash plugin on multiplayer servers. Protection 5 was never in vanilla Minecraft. What is the fastest way to climb in Minecraft? Well, you could pillar up, but yeah, this isn't fast. You could also swim through a soul sand bubble column, which is pretty fast, coming in at 10 blocks a second. Next up is the famous chest slab, pain bell, half-eaten cake, trapdoor staircase, while riding a horse. This one is certainly quicker than the bubble column, but not by as much as I thought. This one comes out to 15 blocks a second. Now let's try one of the oldest methods, which is simply just to right click on all these mine cards. 28.6 blocks a second. Now that is fast, but we have an even faster mode of transportation. Riptide 3 Trident plus Ender Pearl. If you throw an Ender Pearl right as you use Riptide, the pearl goes extremely far, making this method travel you 40 blocks a second. That is insane, and it's the quickest way to travel. So that answers the question, there is new armor in Minecraft. The latest snapshot, 20W04A, has introduced the ability for you to make armor out of any ore you want. To do this, you must use a smithing table and one of these new items called smithing templates. There are currently 12 templates in the game and they are used for combining your diamond armor with emeralds or your iron armor with redstone and so on. Each template makes your armor look different as shown here. Each of these chest plates have gold added to them but with each having a different template. There is obviously an insane amount of customization you can do but to show you the range, here is netherite with emerald gold with diamond, chainmail with netherite, diamond with lapis, iron with redstone, netherite with quartz, and gold with copper. Now the days of all armor looking the same is over. These are some of the oldest mobs in Minecraft. Back in early 2010 in Minecraft's in-dev phase, Beast Boy, Steve, Black Steve, and Rana were added to Minecraft. They were non-hostile mobs that had no walking animation as well as no dying animation. They sort of just moved around. These mobs were created by someone known as Doc, an artist who worked with Notch on the making of Minecraft. Doc had a completely different art direction for the game, which is why these mobs look so out of place. It's rumored that Doc and Notch had a falling out, and only two days after these mobs were introduced, Doc left the team and the mobs were removed from the game. I always thought splash potions of water had no purpose until recently. I mean, other potions have a good use and all sound cool. Potion of weakness. Wow. Potion of water breathing. Wow. Potion of swiftness. Wow. And then there's water bottle. Wow. But you can actually use water in the nether with this. Okay, I don't mean that you can place water using a bucket, that's still not possible. But you can use this potion to put yourself out if you're on fire, if you don't have a cauldron on you, because that works too. All you have to do to make these is to add gunpowder to a regular bottle of water, and now you can save yourself from fire damage. But I still think this is pretty useless. Did you know you can obtain bedrock in survival Minecraft? If you've been playing Minecraft for a while, you probably know by now that you can break bedrock and that it's very easy to do. 
do. All you need are pistons, TNT, obsidian, and a trapdoor. But when you break bedrock this way, you don't actually get the block. So how can you obtain bedrock? A player by the name of Earth Computer actually made a whole bedrock farm and it's all super confusing as you probably expect. But in short, you purposely lag the server so much that when breaking a slime block, an end portal gateway spawns a piece of bedrock where the slime block is. And since the server is lagging so much, when you break this slime block, the game updates and drops a piece of bedrock in its place because bedrock is the only block that is supposed to spawn next to an end gateway. If you understood that and want to rebuild this in your survival world, best of luck to you because that is absolute insanity. Minecraft, but if I touch green, I die. Okay. What the? All right, cool, video over. This contraption could expose where you keep your hidden storage. This very simple contraption allows players to have x-ray and using this, they will be able to see all of your chests. Unless you use a barrel instead, because right next to this chest that you can very easily see are 30 plus barrels. This is because chests don't take up an entire block while barrels do. Now I'm sure that hacked clients nowadays have the ability to see barrels through walls, unfortunately. And if you're playing on a server where you think that may be the case, you can always build a house out of chests at high limit. Because you have to be at Y level 251 for these chests to start rendering in. But if you're playing on a server with friends, barrels are the way to go. Alright, so this is very stupid, but I remember when I was like 10 years old, I was shocked that I could fall from build limit to bedrock and survive because of a one by one of water. I don't know why, I guess because it isn't realistic, but this is in the game too, so I don't know what I was thinking. But now that I'm way too old for Minecraft and for some reason still play it, I have an even bigger question. Can I survive from build limit to bedrock on one pixel of water? You can create this pretty easily. All you need are chests and water like this. And bam, one pixel of water that you can jump on. But can you survive a 400 block fall with this? All right, so I'm all the way up here at build limit and I'm going all the way down there to bedrock. Well, let's see if this works. Oh wow, yes, yes you can. How much TNT can my PC handle? So this is the PC, yeah, it's literally just the pre-built, it's not beefy at all. So 500 TNT? Not even close. What about 12,150? Well, here goes nothing. Okay, it's lagging, but not that bad. Okay, it's still exploding even though I don't see anything. All right, this is what 12,150 TNT looks like. Still didn't destroy my PC though. What about over 50,000 TNT? Okay, it's lagging so much that this skeleton is just sitting here, even though it's dead. And same thing with the zombie, bro is on fire. That explosion lasted 15 minutes, but my PC is still not on fire, so 1 million TNT! Wait, what? Oh my god, lightning just hit my TNT, I'm not even done placing it yet. And my game crashed. Axolotls are not useless. Maybe I'm the only one who thought this, but I thought axolotls were just some cute mob that didn't do anything. But they can turn into this. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is a mod. But they can kill guardians for you. This part isn't a joke, by the way. How did I not know about this semi-useless feature? If I ever find myself in a situation where I have 50 axolotls and somehow not enough materials to fight the elder guardian, this will be very useful. But let's be honest, this would be a lot cooler. YouTubers be like, Minecraft, but I can't touch the color white. Alright, time to find a snow biome. And let's start the video. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this spawn. This is insane. I mean, what are the chances of this happening? Well, I do need wood. Don't see any wood over here, unfortunately. But all the way over there through the snow is one sing- <coughs> All the way over there through the snow is one single tree. This is gonna be difficult, but if I just dig down and get some dirt, I should be able to reach it without touching the color white. Now, you may think that the smart thing would be to build a bridge to 
the tree and you would be incorrect because the most genius thing is to uncaringly jump and place blocks beneath you. Ah, finally made it to the tree. Oh no, I slipped. I will never forgive the Minecraft community for the mob votes. If you're unfamiliar, Mojang hosts a mob vote every once in a while where the community gets to pick what mob to add in the game. And almost every single time, the community picks the worst mob. 2017, we had the choice of this. An ocean mob that sucks players underwater with its tentacles, a mob that sinks in the ground and camouflages itself to give you a scare when you walk over it, and a mob that is just a blaze on steroids. But none of these won the mob vote. Oh no 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 instead the community voted for this all this mob does is attack you if you haven't slept for three days what the f 2020 there was only one good mob in this vote we had the moo bloom which just interacts with bees in some unknown way we had the isolager which hurls ice clouds at the player come on that is just cool and for some reason the community picked this a squid that just glows that's it. Also, for the recent mob vote, this mob sucks. This one's better. Have y'all seen those videos that are like, As you can see, I'm 7.6 seconds away from falling to my death. In my inventory is a water bucket, but that would be too lame. Down there is a pig, and in my inventory is a saddle. If I'm quick enough, I can place the saddle on the pig and then ride the saddle to break my fall. This is an end rod. It is 1.3 seconds away from f***ing my asshole, and if I'm fast enough, I can put on these iron leggings to protect myself from the damage. This is a trap house, full of traps, and even scarier than that, <gasps> pictures of dream. If I'm quick enough, I can go through this mysterious door at the end of the hall and... Let's be honest, Minecraft is way too easy. If you just get some wool and make a bed, you're completely safe the first night. Just do all the base building in the day, mine down to diamond level, strip mine, get a ton of diamonds, build an enchantment table, and you're nearly as strong as you can possibly be. I don't even feel like hardcore is a challenge anymore because of these, and I could just use these to get infinite lives because they're farmable. For the wither boss, you can just mine a hole like this deep underground and kill it without getting even close to dying. And for the five final boss, the Ender Dragon, it is so easy that people beat it with no armor and just beds. The most difficult boss in the entire game is the new Warden mob, and when you kill it, you get nothing valuable. So I'm praying for 1.20 that the Warden will drop an item that allows us to open this portal, and finally, after 12 years, we get a new dimension. And please make it difficult. Oh god, oh god, views are down, I'm losing thousands of subscribers daily, I can't get them to follow my Twitter no matter what I do, this is horrible! Hey, quit talking like that. Who are you? That isn't important. You need to figure out a good video idea right now to get those numbers up, buddy. But what can I do? Hold on, I'm gonna quickly cosplay as Jimmy Neutron and use my brain to figure this out. Uh, uh, what are you? Stop! I almost got it. Wait, I think I have an idea. Let's hear it. Minecraft! But if you like the video, I get more powerful. Oh, well there's our first like. Stop! Buddy, you have to scream every second to make this video good. Okay, okay, I'll try it. Now do that again. Oh! Well there's our first like! Good! Two likes now! That is absolutely perfect. I think our goal for this video is just to beat the Ender Dragon! Ah! Perfect. I am a troll. Recently, my friends and I started a Minecraft server and I had one clear goal from the very beginning troll as much as possible. So I started out with a little lighthearted troll. I replaced nearly every leaf from the trees near my friend's base. This is because leaves normally despawn if they're not attached to wood unless they're placed by a player, so he'll have to manually destroy all these leaves eventually. After that, I downloaded a hacked client and made it so that I could hit players through walls. I dug a small hole under my friend's base and just started punching him. He's very new to Minecraft and was confused by this, so he actually recorded a video and sent it in our Discord. This was a response to that, so I did this troll to him too. 
I also blatantly hacked in front of them. I made Dude, 30. What the fuck? And this one was too far, I admit, but I did compensate this guy for all his stuff lost because I never intend for anyone to lose their stuff. And I also had no idea beds did so much damage. I mean, I had full diamond armor in this clip. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah. Trolling's fun. This is how to speedrun the overworld in Minecraft. First, right when you load in, you want to open your pie chart and use this orange part to look for a chest. Chests always spawn in 9-9 of a chunk. Hopefully you get some TNT and you'll be able to get a bunch of blocks and wood without taking time to punch them by hand. After using that wood to craft the essential tools, a boat, a bucket, and some doors, you should use your boat to then look for an underwater ravine with magma blocks at the bottom. This is how you'll get to the nether. Next to the ravine should be gravel. Use the doors to create an air pocket and mine until you get flint. Craft your flint and steel while you're going down the ravine. Find three magma blocks that form an L shape and create your portal just like this. And that's how you speedrun the overworld. String actually has some unique uses. Recently, I learned that if you place string above lava, it completely stops the lava from making noise. I'm standing above a lava pit with string over it right now, and you cannot hear anything. I'll turn my volume up so you can hear. So this can definitely be used to troll your friends, they just might hate you afterwards. String can also be placed under carpet to get mobs to not follow you. Mobs for some reason won't walk over a carpet that has string under it. So string is pretty underrated. You can also go super high up and place blocks above string while you're jumping to trick your friends. It's multi-purpose. The Warden. The most difficult mob. As you can see here, very, very, very difficult. There are some really cheesy ways to kill the warden. For example, if you build a two block hole and make the warden fall in it, he cannot get out. So you can just shoot him with a bow while you're at least 16 blocks away, cause if you're any closer, this will happen. My personal favorite way of cheesing the warden is to trap him behind cobwebs in a block. Now he's trapped and again, you'll have to use a bow. If you don't want to use a bow, Yes, very exciting. Killing the warden right now is pretty silly because he doesn't drop anything remotely useful, but surely in 1.20 that'll change, right? Please Mojang, it's been 12 years. This is a small W from Mojang. We're getting a cherry blossom biome in the 1.20 update and the planks are absolutely beautiful. I'm a big Mojang hater to be honest. I feel like they don't add very much in their updates. And while it can be argued that this is just another retextured tree for the millionth time, I think this is for sure one of the the better ones. I'm a pink enjoyer. So far in 1.20, we're getting archaeology, another sign, another bookshelf, bamboo wood, armor trimming, camels, the sniffer, and a few more things. Even with this new biome, there's nothing they've announced so far that I'm just jumping out of my seat dying to play in 1.20. So hopefully they announce something that'll make me bust soon. But yeah, this new biome, it's a W. Minecraft, but if I talk about the quadratic formula, the video ends. All right, so I just spawned in. Oh wow, look, a math problem. Um, 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, okay. So substituting these numbers in the quadratic formula to find x, we get negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2, all divided by 2 times 2. <gasps> Oh shoot, I accidentally talked about them. There are quite a lot of useless items in Minecraft. You may be thinking I'm going to say copper is incredibly useless, and you would be right, because it is. But for example, have you ever used a clock? I've played this game on and off for 10 years, and I don't think I have ever crafted a clock. What about a chest minecart? No, I've, I I've never used this either. And what is a recovery compass? I didn't even know this was in the game, but that's not the only one I didn't know. Beet root soup. What? When was this added? How is this not a mod? I have so many questions. Interesting Minecraft features. If your iron golem is dying, you can feed it iron to regenerate its health. My sixth grade science teacher can actually climb up ladders. You can sleep in lava and survival and take no damage. You can MLG in the nether with powdered snow. You can blast proof your house with waterlogged leaves. Piglins are scared of soul campfires, torches, and lanterns. If you ring a bell during a raid, you get an outline of all the pillagers left. If you place a water bucket on the side of a crimson neolium block. 
Nah, I'm just kidding, this doesn't happen. I beat Minecraft in under 15 minutes in Adventure Mode, a difficulty where you cannot place or break blocks. When I spawned into the world, just a few seconds from spawn was a village. I looted 5 houses where I got wood, an iron sword and helmet, emeralds, and food. Using the crafting table in the 5th house, I made 6 boats and over a stack of sticks. I traded the sticks and emeralds with this villager to get arrows, and after him giving me more trades, I was able to get a bow. This is a set seed speedrun, so I already know where the stronghold is, and I'm heading there now. After 3 minutes of swimming, I made it to land, and not far from that is a cave that leads to the stronghold. This is very rare, but the portal was already lit. I did some boat parkour to get to the end island, destroyed all the crystals, and beat the dragon. Ender pearls may be the best item in Minecraft. If you're in a bad situation, you can use them to get away, protect yourself from fall damage, travel way faster, and get above the nether roof. But you can also use them to teleport nearly anywhere you want, even if there are walls in between them. If you throw a pearl and when it gets a few chunks away from you, you turn down your render distance, this allows the pearl to just float in mid-air. When you get far enough away and turn your render distance back up, the pearl starts to move again and you teleport to it. This could be useful if you see a fortress. Throw a pearl away and lower your render distance, and if you're in danger in the fortress, turn your render back up and you'll instantly teleport to safety. Minecraft, but if I see the color green, the video ends. We should be good if I don't spawn in a plains by Minecraft hardcore, but I have half a heart. Can I beat the ender dragon? and half a heart hardcore? Let's find out. First I got some wood, got some tools, got some better tools, and some food. For the first night I built my base underground to be super safe and smelted my food. Now I'm gonna throw chickens in the absolute worst living conditions you have ever seen. I mean I'd hate to be these chickens. Caving in half a heart is probably the scariest thing I can do right now so of course I'm gonna do it, right? F5 is also gonna be super useful to see what kind of mobs are around corners. Not enough iron for a full set of armor, but I am pretty set on iron now. Those are pillagers. That is terrifying. I built a wall around my base and an airlock, you know, inspired by rust, because you can never be too safe. A lot of things happened in this video, and you can see the full thing here. Check it out. Gonna get some of this wee... Oh my god, I'm about to fall to my death. Thankfully, with this crafting table, I can make an iron helmet, pants, chest plate, boots, bucket, hoe, pickaxe, sleeve blocks of iron, anvil, play a couple games of MW2, go on a drive, watch TV, come back, craft some doors, make a bow, and I should clutch this if I'm good enough. And it's just that easy. The Illusioner is the rarest mob in Minecraft because it can only be summoned with commands. This mob has been in the game for 6 years and for some reason never officially added to the game. It's a hostile mob that attacks players with a bow and when damaged it creates illusions of itself for the player to figure out which one is the real mob. It's a pretty unique mob and I'm surprised it's never been added to the game. So, will the Illusioner ever be added to Minecraft? Fishing is probably one of the most underrated things you can do early game in Minecraft. On your first night, kill a few spiders and you'll have enough string for a fishing rod, build an automatic fishing farm and get an auto clicker to right click for you when your rod is below water. If you're on the bedrock version of the game and you can't get an auto clicker because you're on console, I'm just gonna be honest, you're f but if you're a PC gigachad, you can be completely AFK and get fishing rods, enchanted books, name tags, saddles, nautilus shells, bows, leather, and so much more. I won't lie, this is a boring way to play the game, you're just getting a bunch of stuff super early, but regardless, it's still underrated. The biggest mystery ever in Minecraft is still unsolved. If you find a blacksmith in a village and search the chest, there is a 0.1% chance of it being a trap chest and it's sending you in a dungeon where there are 20 different sheets getting f***ed on each wall. Players speculate that Notch actually created this room when he sold Minecraft with the help of Dream. The reason this is speculated is due to a hidden picture located within the dungeon that says my name is Notch and I created this dungeon with the help of Dream when I sold Minecraft. So what do you think? Why is this in the game? Minecraft, but if I see the color yellow, the video ends. Alright, we should be good if I don't spawn in a desert. So the other day I was thinking about ways to murder your friends. Um, in, in Minecraft, of course. So to make sure the FBI doesn't come after me, here's some crazy ways to kill your friends in Minecraft. We're starting with a funny one. If you place a bunch of TNT minecarts below a pressure plate, you can send your friend flying hundreds of blocks in the air. It's actually pretty funny to see, and if they have a totem, they won't die. Another banger is to throw some dripstone in the end portal while it's lit. 
This dripstone will infinitely fall in place in the end until someone enters the portal, so the first person to do so will instantly die. Finally, you can place a bunch of pufferfish under a carpet. The pufferfish will expand, and if you have a lot of them, they'll damage the player so much that they won't be able to move, and they'll just sit there until they die. If you use any of these methods on your friends, please upload a video and tag me. I'd love to see it. Using boats to climb over full blocks in 1.20 will help a ton with villager transportation. Unfortunately, I'm making you all feel how I felt when I first saw this, this isn't gonna be a feature in the game. It was just a bug that was only available for a couple hours before Mojang patched it, and that really sucks, you know, this would have been an awesome feature. Transporting villagers can be a very tedious task, and this definitely would have made it less painful, but I guess that's all we can do now. There are a lot of useful and OP Minecraft farms, like this iron farm, or this gold farm, or even this XP farm. In my opinion, building farms in Minecraft is one of the most fun things to do, but but today I want to look at some utterly useless farms. Like this wool farm. This literally takes forever to make, it's super technical, and if you want a bunch of dogs, just breed them. Believe it or not, you can also make a fern farm in your world. Again, I have no idea why you would want this, but it works by bone mealing one fern, shearing it, and in return, it gives you two ferns. It doesn't end here though, you can also make a bull farm. Yes a bull farm. You can get these from having a bunch of turtles get struck by lightning, which is possible through the lightning rod, and when they die this way, they drop a bull. If that isn't psychopathic enough for you, you can also make a lead farm by building a platform super high in the air, and waiting for wandering villagers to spawn. Eventually they'll end up here where they burn to death and you'll get their lead. So is anyone gonna build these? Bed wars, but I can't build. Except I'm doing 4v4v4v4. I'll try to be as useful as possible though. Let me get one of these bad boys. Those fire balls can be crazy. Where are we building to? Building out here. This guy's building over here. This guy got launched all the way in the air and he's still alive. Oh, well, that didn't last long. We do need to protect this better. I wish they would add like wood or M stone or something. This guy's coming to our base. Dude, why, why does my team not put any wool on it, bro? Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's scared. He's so scared. <laughs> He knows I have unlimited fireballs. <laughs> oh shoot, he survived. <laughs> oh shoot. Oh no, he's dead again. Oh, he'll wreck you. He'll wreck you so good, buddy. What the heck, my iron golem did absolutely nothing. What? Well, at least I tried. So we all know that diamonds are one of the rarest ores to find in the game, spawning anywhere below Y level 16. But there are two different types of diamonds that you can find, deep slay and regular. These two different types of ores go for every ore in the game, making some ores more rare than diamonds, such as deep slate coal. Deep slate starts appearing at Y level 6, and coal will never spawn below Y level 0, making it so that you can only find deep slate coal between Y I level 0 through 6. Although this is pretty rare to find, Deep Slate Emerald is more rare. Emeralds spawn only in mountains, frozen peaks, and windswept hills biomes, but to find Deep Slate Emerald, you have to be in one of these biomes and find it where Deep Slate starts to appear. Now, emeralds typically spawn inside of mountains, making it incredibly rare to spawn in Deep Slate. But still, it has less than a 1% chance of spawning, so if you're trying to get every block in your world, good luck with this one. This is Minecraft 1.20, and this is Minecraft Alpha. Okay, that pig just hurt himself and now his head is going crazy. So what would happen if I converted an alpha world to a 1.20 world? Alright, this is the alpha world I'm converting and here's one last look at it. I'm not sure what to expect. I imagine the world generation is going to look really weird, but that's about it. And now we're in a desert. The world does look pretty similar though. This is actually way better than I expected. Oh well, there's a desert temple underground. I mean, the world generation is kind of messed up. There's just a random plains biome here. And yeah, I don't think world generation is supposed to look like that. Yeah, this world generation is pretty bad. There's a plains, then a desert, then a tiny little swamp, then a little bit of plains there too, then a jungle. Okay, this right here is definitely not how this is supposed to look. I think it is pretty cool though, because you can see where the alpha world was and where the 1.20 chunk started loading. Right here especially, this is definitely not supposed to look like this. And the floating vines are a little odd. But yeah, not as bad as I thought it'd be. I absolutely hate the state of Minecraft PvP. Back in my day, PvP looked like two people with swords, some god apples, maybe a bucket of lava, and of course a bow. Now let's take a look at PvP today. <laughs> Thank you.
That's right, spam right click with end crystals and respawn anchors, hold the totem in your hand so that you can never die, and well, I guess at least this part is similar to the old way. Always have god apples on you. I remember playing on faction servers back in the day and how intense the fights would be, but nowadays, I mean, how can you call this an intense fight? Also, it destroys the terrain and that's a big L. One month ago, I made a video about how Minecraft is way too easy, and in this video, I talked about how easy it is to kill the wither. I got a ton of comments about how I should try to kill the wither in bedrock, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like it won't be too different, but let's try this out. Well, so far, this is pretty easy. People were right, though. He doesn't behave the same way as Java. What just happened? I'm gonna try again. Oh my god, he spawned wither skeletons. That's crazy. That's way... What, what the heck just happened? Wow, so he actually destroys a bunch of blocks when he gets to half health and spawns wither skeletons. That's insane. You can't even damage him with arrows at this stage. Oh my god, the second wither is moving closer to me. What the? From it breaking so many blocks and them just staying on the ground, I'm lagging so bad. This is actually great for mining though. Oh my god, there's the second wither. What the hell is going on? He destroyed all the way to me. So that was my experience. Mojang, please add this wither to Java. I just found a new MLG that's incredibly difficult to pull off. So by now I'm sure everyone knows you can prevent fall damage from getting in a boat, getting in a minecart, placing a slime block, placing a honey block, or placing hay. But did you know you can shovel the snow on an igloo to fall on the bed? Or shoot a drip leaf midair to fall in the water? Or pick up an item with a fishing rod and using it to clutch? Or placing a saddle on a pig? Or riding a horse? Or throwing a fire res potion on a ghast while falling into a Lava. Yeah, there's quite a lot of ways to save yourself in this game, but what I'm talking about is more difficult to do than all of them. If you time it perfectly, you can shoot an iron golem mid-air, and while you're falling, it will attack you and negate your fall damage. I tried this 53 times and only successfully did it once. It is incredibly difficult to do, so good luck if you even try. Automatic farms are something that everyone who's been in a Minecraft world for a long time builds. However, there are quite a lot of automatic farms that people build that are very overrated, like a cactus farm. To be fair, making an automatic cactus farm is super easy, but the only thing you get out of it is cactus greens, so it's pretty useless. Speaking of useless, why the hell do people make automatic pumpkin farms? The only real use for these would be to make snow golems and iron golems, but if you want to do that, just plant them and harvest them with an axe, you don't need thousands of pumpkin. You also don't need thousands of rotten flesh. I know that the only reason people make farms from zombie spawners is for the XP, but why not just look for a spider or skeleton spawner instead? I mean, at least that way you'll get XP and useful items, but with zombie spawners, you only get absolutely worthless stuff. Even though I just trash talked all these farms, I'm still gonna build all of them. Today is March 12th, which means today is the day I rescue my friend Leet from captivity. Oh, excuse me, sir. Do you know where my friend Leet is? Leet, do you know where he is? No, you don't? Where is Leet? Where is he? What have you done with him? If you don't tell me where Leet is right now, you're all getting it. From up here, I can get a good hit on them. We need more power. Oh my gosh, Lee, did they put you in here, buddy? Did they put you in here? Minecraft, but I spawn in the nether. Okay, so this is a pretty decent spawn. I'm gonna get some wood, and I know every YouTuber says this, and it's kind of cringe, but my goal is to find diamonds. You may be wondering, how am I gonna find diamonds if I'm only gonna be in the nether? Well, in fortresses and bastions, you can find diamonds in the chests, so I'm just hoping I get lucky enough to find them early. I wanna go over there, because I can get stone tools with that black stone. Oh my god, there's a fortress right there. All right, we made it in. Also, this is where I was originally gonna go to get this black stone, and it just just so happen to have a fortress right next to it. No diamonds, but iron is pretty sick. Diamond horse armor. Okay, I'm not gonna be weird, that doesn't count. I'm gonna use this iron that I got to make an iron pickaxe and axe. Let's hope this bastion has diamonds because I had no luck with that fortress. No, get away, get away! 
Oh my god, I was so close to dying. Take the gold, man. Stop shooting me. All right, I'm going for it. Oh my god, six diamonds. Let's go. Should I make this a series? I'm trying to be Minecraft and have a heart hardcore, so instead of progressing in the game, I decided to move the overworld to the nether. Yeah. It wasn't easy though, I first had to make an outline, run from a gas trying to kill me, remove the floor, get a silk touch shovel, which I got first try, just saying, destroy the land, replace the netherrack with grass, demolish an entire ecosystem's worth of trees, use the logs to build houses, add some trees, add some grass, add some flowers, add some villagers, oh god, okay man, dude, can you just go in the portal? You can see the whole video here. Check it out. You have now gone too far, Mojang. What in the sweet heavenly f have you done in this recent update? Okay, now hear me out. So normally when you look up painting in the creative menu, you only get one painting, right? Well, in this update, you get every single possible painting just given to you. So why am I upset about this? Because now people won't get the experience of placing down a painting over and over and over and over again to get the exact painting they want. It sucks. It's BS. I want people to experience the same pain I went through. I killed the Wither in Bedrock Edition in 32 seconds. Not a record, but last week I made a video about how the Bedrock Wither is infinitely more difficult than the Java Wither, because on Java you can very easily kill it with just iron armor and a bow, while on Bedrock I died over and over and over again without getting it past half health really. But since then, I found the fastest strategy to kill this thing, just get a trident with impaling five riptide three and drink a strength two potion and keep slamming yourself into this guy it does so much damage it's also incredibly difficult to control this thing at the beginning i was just flying over and under the wither for like 10 seconds so you can very easily beat this time but if you're on bedrock try this strategy next time you're facing the wither there are a lot of light sources in minecraft everyone knows about torches jack-o-lanterns lava glowstone redstone lamps and sea lanterns. But there are some newer light sources like campfires, shroom lights, lanterns, candles, end rods, conduits, and a respawn anchor. Believe it or not, there are actually way more than what I just listed, but there's two light sources that I didn't even know were in the game, and one of them is actually illegal to obtain. One of them is the frog light, and there are actually three different colors you can obtain. This is a super unique light source because the way you get it is from a frog eating a tiny magma cube, so you either have to bring a frog to the nether or bring a magma cube to the overworld which is super unique and i just love the idea of that and the other is glowing obsidian what it was only in bedrock and pocket edition for a limited time and to my knowledge the only way to get it now is by cheating but as far as light sources currently in the game the frog light is by far the most unique coal is no longer necessary unless you're making torches but other than that the only other big use of coal is a fuel source so this is my wake up call to you stop using coal for fuel and use lava instead unlike coal that doesn't smelt that many items for each one and is is technically limited unless you make a wither skeleton farm, you can instead use lava. It is a far better fuel source. One lava bucket can smelt 100 items. But other than that, it is also super easy to farm using dripstone and cauldrons, which means early game you can get an unlimited fuel source. Last week I talked about the iron golem MLG and how it was extremely difficult to pull off because you have to shoot an arrow at an iron golem at the perfect time for it to damage you midair and negate your fall damage. Since then, I've looked at other nearly impossible MLGs and didn't find many that I thought were more difficult than this until I discovered the poison MLG. This MLG is exactly what it sounds like and is nearly impossible to pull off. While you're falling, if you give yourself the poison effect, it may damage you midair which negates all your fall damage. This is so difficult because the poison has to damage you at the perfect time to break your fall, making this the almost impossible possible MLG. I thought 1.20 was going to be called the Trails and Tails update as they literally said it would be, but Mojang recently wrote a blog post where they changed this name to Trails and Tails. Tails. Yeah. You may think this is a typo, but they actually called it this twice because Mojang never makes mistakes. So yeah, 1.20 has a new name.
Trails and tails. YouTubers be like, Minecraft, but you control my world. That means for every like a random mob spawns, and for every subscribe, I get randomly teleported. Oh man, I'm gonna trick so many kids for my own personal gain with this one. Alright, so we just spawned into the world, and oh my god, someone must have just liked. Quickly, I need someone to subscribe to get me out of here. Oh man, thanks to whoever just subscribed. Also, I think our goal for this video is just to get diamonds. Oh my gosh, look, a desert temple. Who subscribed? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I'm actually right next to another temple. Come on, come on, quickly before someone subscribes, I gotta see what's in here. And I got some diamonds. Oh wait, actually that wasn't loud enough, let me redo that. I beat Minecraft's earliest possible version to see how different the game was back then versus how it is now. Immediately I noticed how much easier it was, creepers did almost no damage, lava did very little damage, and the end dragon did nothing. But I'll talk about that later. In this version you have to be very careful when building the nether portal as any unnecessary block, even if it's not in the portal frame, can make it unable to be lit. I was in the nether for a very short time as I spawned inside the fortress, but in this version you have to be much closer to blazes for them to see you. The most annoying part about this entire run was trying to get ender pearls because you have to wait for nighttime, you have to hope endermen spawn, and you have to hope that they'll actually drop pearls. So it took me over an hour just to get enough pearls. Then the ender dragon. This guy runs away after every single hit, so I literally sat here for 30 minutes painfully trying to kill him. It was actually awful, thank god they changed all this. If you're playing Minecraft with your friends and want to do a little bit of trolling, try trading with villagers to get a bunch of XP bottles. Then use a silk touch pickaxe to get a block of redstone ore, and make a little box like this to spam your XP bottles on the ore. For some reason, XP particles multiply the particle effects that come out of redstone ore, meaning if you do this a lot, you can create an insane lag machine. But even better, if you go into your settings and turn particle effects off, this lag won't affect you at all and only the other players. Alright, I'm gonna say it. The dragon egg is the most useless item in all of Minecraft. More useless than the luck potion, the water arrows, and the poisonous potato. You literally have to build a nether portal, go to the nether, find a fortress, kill some blaze, get ender pearls, find the stronghold, go to the end, defeat the ender dragon, and he will drop this. This item is only a trophy and does nothing in game. It would be cool if this was used to craft something, or at least you could hatch a pet dragon from it. It would be cool if you could ride your pet dragon, but even if you couldn't, it would just be cool to have a pet dragon walking around your base. The hoglin is awesome. I know this is a controversial opinion, but you can use a hoglin farm to get infinite cooked pork chop, and they can be quite the challenge in the beginning, so I'm a big fan. I'll also add the wither and shulker in this category because they both offer somewhat of a challenge and drop very useful items. Below that, I'm actually going to put the Ender Dragon and Warden because I think the dragon fight should be way more difficult than it is, and I wish there was a reason to kill the Warden. I know there isn't, but I just wish there was. In trash, garbage, awful, terrible tier, I'm putting the slime. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not doing that. I'm putting the bat. No explanation needed. I'm also putting the glow squid, mushroom, llama, this guy. I've literally never even seen this mob before, so I'm pretty sure it's useless. And finally, the donkey. I was gonna put the puffer fish in this tier, but then I realized how awesome it is for trolling. Just slap a carpet down and put a puffer fish underneath it. Your friends will be so confused. There's something wrong with this video. If you can figure out what's wrong with this video, you will win absolutely nothing except maybe the accomplishment of figuring out what's wrong. So, did you see it? Figured I'd give y'all a base tour. Let me just harvest this wheat real quick. Come on, dog, get out of here. He's in my way. All right, now inside we got a ceiling of item frames and item frames. It's very nice, you know, but the centerpiece of this build is my prized crafting barrel furnace smithing table. And thankfully, my sheep is still in a cell. I caught him a few days ago, but I do need to get rid of these seeds now, so I'm going to make a little garbage area. 
All right, that looks good. So over here is my little grass farm. It's growing pretty well, you know. I need to cut it a bit, and I do need to add more to my farm. So let's go outside and find some more grass for my farm. So today's April Fools, which means there's a new April Fools Minecraft snapshot, and it's a big one. You can be big, you can be small, you can be literally any mob in the game. If you go far enough in the air, you will actually land on the moon with these moon cows that actually moonwalk. And on the moon are land rovers and when you step on the pressure plate it generates this massive structure with resupply crates also every 30 seconds to a minute a new vote will pop up on the screen for example one vote i got was spawn acacia wood instead of obsidian when lava interacts with water so basically your game completely changes over time some other votes i got were glow bees every block can be blown up like tnt the ether portal all the sheep are purple mine carts have wheels and the moon is made out of cheese so you can actually eat the moon. There's way too much in the snapshot for me to cover, so go try it out yourself. If you're like me, you probably never use the chest boat, but it actually has a pretty unique use, and that is making a secret base entrance. Now, there are a couple ways you can make a secret base entrance. For example, if you have a shulker box and an item sitting three blocks above it, you can stand on the shulker box while opening it, and you'll phase through, entering your secret base. Another way is placing down a hopper minecart and placing blocks over it using pistons. This way, when you want to enter your base, just throw down an item where the minecart is and you can easily enter. Other than those two ways, there's a third secret entrance in this base using a chest bow. If I turn on hitboxes, you can actually see the chest bow is placed inside the wall, only visible if you have hitboxes on. Just place any item in the bow and you can produce a redstone signal to open your secret base entrance. Minecraft is a huge game with over 800 blocks in three different dimensions, but I still wish there was more because I can never be pleased. So here's my Minecraft wish list. First of all, give us something cool for defeating the Warden. He's the strongest mob in the game, and I feel like if you go out of your way to kill him, you should be rewarded with something other than this. Secondly, a new dimension. I would actually prefer this to be the Aether dimension because it's super unique and cool with many different mobs, bosses, blocks, and scenery. And Mojang could, for example, make the Warden drop a key that lights this portal, and that portal takes you to the Aether. Third, remove beetroot soup. Why is this in the game? Also, remove the poisonous potato. Also, let me build another portal however high I want. For some reason, if the portal is bigger than 23 by 23, then it won't light. Like, why? Just let me make it bigger if I want. Finally, let me hatch this to get a pet dragon. Oh my god, is that actually? As you can see, I'm 3.97 seconds away from falling into this lava and dying. Luckily, I have a fire resistance potion in my inventory, and if I throw it on this gas while I'm falling, Falling, I won't take any damage from the lava. How the f did I end up here? As you can see, these sheep are in danger of being f***ed by this end rod. I just have to stop this ugly creature from flicking this lever and wreaking havoc on these sheep. Oh, thank god, that was close. What the hell? Minecraft, but I'm in the Aether dimension. I'm gonna start off by getting wood. Something is shooting at me. Is it this thing? What the heck is that? What are you? Okay, I got a core petal. That's interesting. Whoa, 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 whoa. This thing is trying to get me to ride it. Not happening, buddy. Oh my god, there's another one running after me. What the heck is going on? Can't do anything in this world. Why are there trees made out of gold? Gotta make a sword quick. Oh my god, I'm getting sucked by him again. And what the heck are these things? This little dodo or whatever is shooting arrows at me. I'm bleeding. I killed it, but I'm bleeding. Oh my god, am I gonna die? And that thing is shooting me? I'm literally dead here. This is so garbage. And I'm dead. It's a good thing I don't give up easily, though. What is this? food blueberries okay i have a pickaxe axe and sword now i have a few of these blue air clouds too these look interesting i wonder if i just fall through them oh my god this is not what i wanted uh how, how do i get that to stop god dang it i beat minecraft on half a heart hardcore previously i set up my starter base and even moved an entire village to the nether but today i'm focusing on getting blaze rods and ender pearls to defeat the dragon when i found the blaze spawner i blocked it off and dug underneath it to make Make sure I only hit their feet, but I almost died.
I left the spawner with 25 blaze rods and searched for endermen in the nether when I found the biggest enderman orgy ever. I then worked on getting this god bow to make the dragon fight easier and then I headed to the stronghold. Inside the stronghold I found this zombie spawner which was pretty cool but inside the chest was a god apple. I then lit the portal and began the dragon fight. The full video is on my channel, check it out. Fortune is arguably the best enchantment in Minecraft, making it so that you can mine one diamond and it can give you many more in return. Fortune is most widely used on pickaxes, but fortune is also on shovels, axes, and hoes, so what does fortune even do on these tools? With axes, when you destroy leaves with fortune, you get more saplings, apples, and sticks, and you also get more watermelon. For shovels, I'm pretty sure the only benefit is you get more flint from gravel. Yeah, it does doesn't work on clay, surprisingly. I have no idea why they don't add other uses for this. It's incredibly useless, but fortune on a hoe you can use to get more food from your crops, making it super useful to get the best food in Minecraft, beetroot soup. Minecraft is a huge game with a bunch of different block textures, but you can still use texture packs to change the look of the game. Like this texture pack called Brixel. It turns Minecraft into a Lego world where almost every item is Lego and all mobs are Lego as well. As cool as this pack is, I know if I tried to run it on my PC, it would blow up. So a texture pack that I can actually run is this one, called Prime's HD Textures, which turns Minecraft into a cartoonish and smooth world, but one texture pack that massively changes Minecraft is this X-Ray pack. This pack is used on almost every server in Minecraft, and if you're caught using it, it will result in a ban from the server. So if you decide to use this pack, just try not to make it so obvious that you have X-Ray. You can also use shaders to enhance your experience, but if you're PC is anything like mine, it will only end one way. I decided to play Bed Wars without building. When I spawned in, I decided to get resources as normal and buy myself a stone sword and a pickaxe. I bought other tools too as soon as I could and then started loading up on fireballs. I saw my first enemy approaching with iron armor and I didn't have iron armor and I needed five more gold to get iron armor, so I stalled by staring at him until I could buy armor. And it worked. Wow. But shortly after, he decided to try and come over again at the same time as my other neighbor tried to come over, so I shot him. And again. And this guy too. And then I got him. And then I got him. Wow, the strat is actually working. Four people have been eliminated. The blue guy also had three diamonds and five emeralds, so I upgraded my armor. Some time passed, and I got this guy when he least suspected it, and then I got cocky, and I did it to the blue guy. He said I was cringe, by the way. But 14 diamonds and 10 emeralds, but it was no match for the OP blocks appearing out of nowhere and an ender pearl. So sad. Why do we mine in Minecraft? I mean, other than in the beginning, of the game to get iron there really isn't a point to mining if you need fuel use lava instead of coal if you need iron make an iron golem farm if you need gold make a piglin farm if you need emeralds make a zombie farm or pumpkin farm or anything that you can trade with villagers to get emeralds until you can make a raid farm and if you need diamonds just loot shipwrecks to find buried treasure because you don't really need that many diamonds to be set if you have the mending enchantment cleric villagers can trade lapis and a witch farm can give you unlimited redstone uh, but Vivali, what about copper? What in the sweet hell do you need copper for? The only real necessity to mine is netherite, and it's not even essential because you should be more than fine with full protection diamonds. But netherite is the most fun to mine because I like blowing up things. I trapped 20 of my subscribers in a 100 by 100 world, and the last player alive wins. I gave them a grace period of 5 minutes to collect materials before I turned on PvP. Some people decided to team, and uh... Some people drowned, but when I turned PvP on, we immediately had players build up to get a safe spot while underneath the world, a fight was starting. Crafty time, death time, two. Oh! Bubba plays out of nowhere to kill Crafty Time, holy! Fights were breaking out everywhere. Nobody was safe, and as the border closed in, people were getting knocked into the water with a ton of drowned. At one point even, this guy trapped himself in a small hole surrounded by drowned. I gave him this ultimatum that he had to get above water in 10 seconds or else he'd die. <laughs> Before I knew it, there were two people left and they were coming for each other. And with one single sweep, 
The Duck Detective 1. Did you know you can turn dirt into diamonds in Minecraft? I'm surprisingly not trolling. All you have to do is turn dirt to mud using a water bottle, then turn that mud into clay with dripstone. Yeah, I didn't know this was possible either. I mean, I don't even know when they added mud. But you can use this clay to trade with villagers for emeralds and use those emeralds to unlock villager trades. With enough unlocks, you can buy diamonds and diamond gear with these newly acquired emeralds. This translates to roughly 13 dirt equal equaling one diamond, which is absolutely insane. Minecraft, but if I tell the truth, the video ends. All right, we just spawned on a spongy wasteland. Just gonna lick some of this endstone with my netherite pickaxe. Gonna turn that into nether bricks. And I'm gonna use my tongue to smell this oxygen. Oh my God, there's a camel, let's kiss it. I'm not gonna use this furnace to milk the camel juice. And now we have seven camel tongues. Wow, there's even less camels over here. Oh my God, there's a mausoleum filled with seasons one through five of Breaking Bad over there. And here's the inhabitants, my step bros. Step bro, I'm so glad you're not stuck. Oh, there's Jacksepticeye. Let's lick him. More Jacksepticeyes in the chest. Let's see what's in this iron... Uh... Cock. Fuck. I mean... Oh my god. Okay. Um... Yeah, that's fine. I guess I'll roll with it. Oh my god, now I have three moving step bros that aren't stuck. Let's go smell Jacksepticeye. Oh my god, okay. Well, I just died. I mean, lived. Oh, shit. Minecraft's bedrock block is impossible to break, and I got trapped in a prison full of it with nothing in my inventory. Knowing I had to get out, I decided to get some wood. Then I mined some iron and crafted the bucket that I used to get water so that I could place it on my head and easily swim out. There are a lot of biomes in Minecraft, and some like the Plains biome are loved by many because it's an OG biome and overall a very peaceful biome to build your base. The Birch Forest is one of the most hated biomes in Minecraft because a lot of people think it's the worst wood type, but they would be wrong. Have we all forgotten that savanna biomes exist? Look at this wood, it is unbelievably disgusting. Look at this village, these houses are unbelievably disgusting. Look at these trees, they are unbelievably disgusting. Look at this village. Oh my god, I can't even look at him. He is unbelievably disgusting. The savannah biome is the worst biome in all of Minecraft, and there's nothing you can say to change my mind. Minecraft myth busting. Can you trap a wither and reinforce deep slate? Looks like he can't get out. Yeah, you can. You can use wood to repair shields. Okay, no way this works. Wow, that actually works. You can sprint underwater when standing on mud. Surprisingly, this is true. Spiders can't hit you when riding a camel. That's false. You can put armor trim on turtle helmets. True. The warden can't drown. I'm actually not sure about this one. Yeah, this is false. The rarest death messages in Minecraft include falling off a minecart onto a waterlogged block to get the message death fell accident water however you can also get this message by damaging an armor stand with thorns or even this message which is impossible to get naturally by placing down berry bushes and dying to them while fighting the dragon however these death messages are very easy to replicate in survival minecraft but a death message even more rare than those that is very difficult to obtain to survival is being struck by lightning whilst fighting shulker the reason this is so rare is because lightning doesn't strike in the end, meaning you have to go to the end, find an end city, capture a shulker, move the shulker possibly thousands of blocks to the end portal, be in a biome that rains, and let the shulker attack you as lightning kills you. A new Minecraft snapshot is here with one of my favorite additions of all time. No, not a biome, although I do love the cherry blossom biome. A new music disc. You can get this music disc through finding a trail ruin and brushing suspicious gravel. absolute fire. Also, there are a ton of new advancements for getting a sniffer egg, planting torch flower seeds, making an armor trim, and before sniffers wouldn't go to water when on fire, but now they do, so uh that's cool. I tried playing Minecraft blind. Now, believe it or not, my eyes are still attached to their socket. I just have my eyes closed right now. This sounds like leaves. I'm trying to find where the wood is. I feel like I'm in the jungle biome. Oh god, I'm drowning. And I hear a drowned behind me. Oh god. Now I'm hitting these leaves again. Oh my god, I'm getting wood. Nice, I'm actually getting wood. There's another piece of wood right here. Where is that wood I just mined? Now the hardest part is gonna be making a crafting table. I think if I go down here and press one, pick it up, go up here, 
do some of this. Oh my god, what did I just do? I think I just dropped it. Jesus, man. I think I'm stuck in water or something. I can't find my way out. Can I please just get on land? I don't know where I'm going right now, but I'm swimming somewhere. We're just gonna go straight until we find land, I guess. And I just keep taking drown damage. And I died. I'm responding to some serious allegations. I played Minecraft blind yesterday, and I have just learned I cheated. And my response is... You're all stupid. In case you didn't know, you can turn up your volume to hear what's going on around you. Mr. Smoothbrain here is doubting that I could tell I was in the jungle biome with my eyes closed, but I was literally wrong about this. I spawned in a mangrove biome, and the reason I thought it was jungle is very simple. I heard the sound of me climbing vines. I like how he knew he was drowning. Just do me a favor and close your eyes and listen. I wonder how I'm taking damage. He faked it! He purposely threw the mangrove root and then said, what did I just do? I feel like I'm getting trolled with this one. I literally was trying to make a crafting table and thought the roots were wood and then accidentally dropped it and used my apparent elephant ears to hear the sound of an item hitting water. So yeah. I'm a cheater. The biggest troll in all of Minecraft is the bundle. This item was revealed in 2020 and can hold up to 64 items, and you can also place it inside a shulker box, which would give you an insane amount of inventory space. However, this item isn't even officially in the game. After the bundle was announced for 1.17, it got delayed to 1.18, then got delayed again to 1.19, and now again, it is delayed to 1.20. And I still don't think it's gonna come out in 1.20, because on the latest snapshot, you can only activate bundles by turning them on in the Experiments tab. And this tab is for potential new features. But why? It's already fully coded, it's in the game, you announced it three years ago, just give us the item. I held a death swap event where every two minutes, players would switch positions with another player in hopes of killing them. One of the rounds we played in the nether, and I decided to join my subscribers on the ground. I got some wood and then realized I can't make a boat to break my fall out of the nether wood. <gasps> you can't make a boat out of these? No. No, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? I killed a hoglin for some pork chop and then headed to the bastion before the first swap happened and got destroyed. God dang it. Oh my God, man. That was so dumb. I may have done bad, but at least I didn't die like this guy. This guy said a hoglin pushed him in lava. <laughs> Upon the first swap, so many people died and the chat was full of death messages. On the second swap, I managed to watch this guy die to lava and other players died to fall damage, making Phantom Rafter the winner of the nether round. To join the next event, join our discord in the comments. One item in Minecraft that I will never obtain, I will never use, and I will never even understand why it's in the game is the luck potion. Yes, I would definitely eat the poisonous potato before I ever touch the luck potion potion. I'm not sure if this item even works, but it supposedly increases your chance of finding better loot when fishing or looting naturally generated chests around the world. That sounds good though, right? But I actually just learned while making this video that the luck potion is not available in survival. What the fuck? This potion is only available in creative mode, and that makes absolutely no sense. Why would I need a luck potion in creative mode if I can already give myself whatever I want? El Mojang. For the last 12 years, Minecraft had a huge bug where if you jump on the side of a block that gave you a special effect, you would not get that effect. Well, that bug is finally fixed. Before, if you jumped on the side of a slime block, you would instantly die, but now you bounce off of it like normal. But this comes with a downside. You can now no longer jump on the side of soul sand, or honey blocks, or magma blocks, but you can ice blocks, so that's kind of cool. But even on the side of farmland, if you jump now, it will just change to dirt. So was this really worth it? This may be the most impressive build I've seen in Minecraft. Yes, even more impressive than this massive city. It doesn't look like anything special from here, but as I move toward the buildings, you can see that this build only works from that one perspective. And when looking at it from this perspective, it gives the city much more depth. This build is by Mine674, and one thing you may notice is that when getting closer to the city, these shulker boxes begin to appear only when you get close. That is because shulker 
poker boxes create shadows, but the box itself disappears when you get far enough away, leaving the shadow behind. So what do you think about this? One of the most fun things in Minecraft is to blow up your friend's PCs. Now the best way to do this is a lag machine, so I'm going to show you three lag machines to blow up your friend's PC. One way is to spam place hundreds of minecarts and then make this powered rail contraption under the minecarts for them to go in an endless loop. This makes the game lag significantly as hundreds of entities are constantly moving and as you can see the lag is pretty bad. Now one of my favorite lag machines is to throw XP bottles on redstone ore as the XP particles for some reason multiply and this causes extreme lag. But this machine can also be a one-way lag machine because you can just turn your particle effects off and this lag won't affect you. But it will affect players who have particle effects on. Finally, build a bubble column, place a fence gate, and hook a dispenser full of arrows to a redstone clock. This one would make my PC blow up. I had AI play Minecraft for me. What's the first thing I should do? Gather resources. All right, so this is a pretty strange spawn. I think this polar bear will be friendly with me as long as I don't hit him. Psych, I'm still gonna hit him. Just gonna get all this wood, and there's my resources. All right, so it wants me to upgrade my tools. I'm not gonna lie, now this is some pretty solid advice, although I didn't have any tools to begin with, so any tool is an upgrade. There we go, I have wood tools. I upgraded my tools, what should I do next? So it says I should explore further. Oh, well, that was a fun adventure. I didn't go far at all. My cave hit a dead end. What should I do? Wow, this is actually some really good advice. When strip mining, what should I be looking for? Diamonds, redstone, gold, iron, and it even tells you the Y levels for the ores, which is pretty cool, but this is for the old version of the game, not the new one with Deep Slate. But overall, if you don't know how to play Minecraft, just ask AI. Minecraft is finally changing one of the worst features in the game. For the past 11 years, when you went through a nether portal and stayed in, you would have this transitioning effect on your screen for the entire time you're in the portal. Well, finally in 1.20 pre-release 1, this is no longer a thing. Mojang also recently changed a bug they had in their game for 11 years where if you jumped on the side of a block that gave you a special effect, you would not get that effect. These two changes are a massive W and now I won't get disoriented when in the nether portal. I played Minecraft completely blind and found diamonds. I started up a world and let my live stream direct me the entire time, but I had my volume up so there were certain things I could do without the chat's constant help. By far the worst part was crafting. Alright, so I should be holding it now, right? So how far should I go up? Move mouse a little right, up left, up and then right. But even with this handicap, I found coal, made torches for the stream to see, found iron, even smelted the iron, and trying to go down to diamond level was a massive issue. What the heck just happened? Thankfully, I'd keep inventory on, but eventually we got to diamond level and I actually got diamonds. We're gonna conquer the nether next stream, so make sure to join. I just found out something crazy. Let's say you're in an escape room with flowing lava, snow in the ceiling, a one block escape, some ice on the floor, and one chest with 16 eggs and one fishing rod that can only be used one time. How would you be able to escape? Well, you're supposed to light the fishing rod with the lava to evaporate the snow and doing that got me some candles in a bucket but again how does this help us reach the exit well now that the fishing rod is gone we need to place these candles on the ice and find a way to light them the only way to do that now is to light the egg on fire and that actually lights the candles and after the ice turns into water we're able to use the bucket and escape the room i just thought this feature was really cool and wanted to show it off the biggest minecraft server is shutting down no, I'm not talking about the biggest server today, I'm talking about the biggest server in 2016, Mindplex. Mindplex, like Hypixel, was a minigame server and one where thousands of people played on daily, but recently their server has had almost no players on at all times, and because of this, they announced in Discord that the server has been shut down. However, they also announced that they're making a Mindplex V2 with new games and old game modes, so maybe the server will make a comeback? But this was the go-to server back in the day and this is the end of an era. So I've talked about overrated farms and underrated farms, 
so let's talk about the most fun farms to build in minecraft this is just my opinion by the way please don't get pressed about this in the comments to start with a weird one frog light farms are insanely fun because of their challenge and uniqueness you literally have to find a frog bring it to the nether find a magma cube spawner in a bastion and make an area so the frogs can eat the magma cubes another fun farm to build is a creeper farm and the main reason for that is the noise they make when they're dying yeah but another one is a gold farm and for this to be efficient you'll need magma blocks but then you make these platforms for the piglins to spawn on and the end result is insanely satisfying villager farms are pretty fun also because it's like your own little prison and uh you know, that's pretty cool. Minecraft myth busting. You can place a bucket under a wet sponge while it's smelting to soak up the water. Okay, I've actually never heard of this, but this is actually true. You can now fit three people in one boat. All right, so if we put this baby camel in the boat and wait for it to grow up, false. Wearing mob heads protects you from hostile mobs. Okay, nope, this one is definitely false. You can put down waypoints on a map. Okay, so if I take this banner and rename it and right click it with my map, yeah, this actually works. You can also place it in an item frame. Exploding ores drops XP. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't work. Wow, it actually works. Apparently ghasts can't see you if you're in cobwebs. All right, yeah, that one definitely doesn't work. So I tried to play Hypixel and... Uh, I'm banned for creation of inappropriate build or drawing. What? I last played on Hypixel three weeks ago and wanted to find out what I could have possibly built because I had no idea. Thankfully, it was live streamed and the last thing I built was a hammer. Oh, a hammer. It's like this, this. That looks just like a hammer. Wow, look at this hammer. This looks like a hammer, man. Oh my God, that looks so good. Now this looks like, this looks like a hammer. Now, if we put these mobs on top of it now, you see, it's starting to look an awful lot like a hammer. This looks like a hammer. Best looking hammer I've ever seen. Hammer. <laughs> yeah, hammer. Ham. Cheese, lettuce, tomato, ham. Okay, maybe I got a bit carried away, but this isn't inappropriate. Oh, wait, uh, hold on. What am I drawing here? Okay, I understand now. I'm sorry, Hypixel. Minecraft, but my gravity is flipped. All right, this is weird. But the block should still drop as if gravity is normal. All right, we now have a crafting table and a wood pickaxe. I guess the next step is to find coal, right? Oh, well, that was easy. And we have light and iron right above me. I found a cave, and this is so weird looking. What the heck? These two are fighting. Maybe I can survive surprise the skeleton oh i got him i'm about to do something crazy i wonder will i be able to use this boat to travel on the ground oh my god this is how we beat the game now this just seems like normal minecraft i can pick up this water and i'm gonna use this lava pool to build the portal i think we've built it and it should light nice now this could go very badly okay well this is absolutely fantastic this player got full netherite armor in only 35 seconds it was on a Set seed speed run where you spawn right next to a portal with two obsidian and efficiency axe and a flint and steel. After getting those materials, he entered the nether and got a nether wart block to jump off of and four wood. With the wood, he quickly made a crafting table and in midair made a ladder to block clutch. He destroyed both chests where he got building blocks to move to the bastion right next to this one and destroyed those chests that had a total of four netherite ingots, full diamond armor, and enough iron to make a smithing table. From here, he just put the armor and ingots into the smithing table and got the achievement cover me in debris i could easily beat this it's finally here my minecraft server it's a 1.19.4 semi-anarchy server where we have an economy shops bounties obviously pvp also we don't even have a store you cannot pay for anything the server is the exact opposite of pay to win you can't buy a single thing and you can do almost anything you want on this server want to use x-ray that's perfectly fine want to fly hack okay that's cool too want to set an extremely high bounty on your friend and watch everyone on the server try to kill them that's encouraged eventually the server will turn into an smp and hacking won't be allowed but for now it is and at the end of every month we'll vote on features to add and features to remove the spawn is also yeah that'll be one of the first changes but i hope you join our server and have fun while you're playing the server address is vanarchy.win and i hope to see you there yesterday on my server people kept putting a bounty on me selling in the shop i spent 10 minutes getting ready to fight again when this guy asked me to tp to him i was pretty geared up 
I regret it now. I got teleported and instantly started crying. Minecraft 1.20 is right around the corner, and in Minecraft's recent update, they changed a feature that's been in the game for years. In 1.20 pre-release 6, anvils are no longer affected by gravity. Nah, I'm just kidding. That'd be funny though, wouldn't it? The real change that Minecraft made with anvils is that when anvils fall and items dropped on the ground, they no longer disappear, they just get moved out of the way. This is a really weird change that I don't think was necessary because this doesn't happen very often, but because of that, this won't be a change that I notice in game. Tips for new Minecraft players. Pressing Q while staring at lava lets you repair your tools. Now we all know that sleeping in the nether kills you, but sleeping in the end actually regenerates your hunger. If you make a house like this and place a block of lava in one of the corners, you can make a cheap garbage disposal. Digging straight down has a 73% chance of finding diamonds. If you find a structure like this, making lots of noise gives you a full set of netherite armor. If you're on a server, cut down trees like this and leave the rest of the tree floating for other people on the server to get some wood. Send this to your friends to help them out. This arrow can one-shot kill the ender dragon, but how is this possible? Now typically a fully charged arrow does three hearts of damage while no charge at all deals half a heart of damage. But with enchanting, this number significantly increases. But even without chanting, we can still instantly kill the ender dragon with just one arrow. This is because an arrow's speed determines how much it can damage a mob or player. And this machine built in the end charges the arrow up so much that it travels at such high speeds to instantly kill the ender dragon and even the warden that sits at 250 hearts of health. I'm about to show you three blocks that you forgot were in Minecraft because they're really stupid and nobody uses them. So first up is the lodestone. I had no idea this was in the game, I've never even heard that word before, and for good reason, because this item lets you alter the place compasses point to, but I have F3, so I don't need a compass. One slightly less stupid one though is the loom, because while nobody has ever used this item in the history of mankind, it lets you customize your banners, which I think is a pretty cool feature. But the dumbest item of all time is one that actually does nothing, literally nothing. Can you guess what it is? All right, poisonous potato. Yeah, I just removed this one from the game already. I just got unbanned from Hypixel, so I'm gonna play Bed Wars without building. Oh, I think this is the exact same map as the last time I played this. All right, so I guess I'm gonna do what I normally do, just get fireballs off the bat. A bed has already been destroyed too, which is hilarious. All right, now we have iron armor and nobody's even trying to kill me. Oh, hold up, this guy right here is trying to get to me. Maybe I can... Dude, really? Bro, this guy is garbage at speed building. Hold up, now this guy is trying to get to me. Back off, buddy. Again? Oh, this guy's coming. This guy's garbage at speed building. He just fell off again. <gasps> oh my god. No way that guy just killed me like that. Jesus. What the hell? Where did this guy come from? He destroyed my bed. What is even going on? Where, where did this guy actually come from? What? How did he get to me? How did he get to me? And I'm dead now. There's literally no blocks to my base. What? Minecraft, but if I see the color blue, the video ends. All right, so we should be good as long as I don't spawn in an ocean. Oh, wow, I actually didn't spawn in an ocean. That's the first. You know what? I'm tired of comments like this where everyone says I'm faking something about a video. So instead of debunking these claims again, I'm gonna actually fake a video. One week from today, I'm going to post the most fake video you've ever seen, but I also wanna do a little bit of trolling. So when someone in the comments points out that the video is clearly fake and gives a reddit user type of explanation as to why it's fake i want you all to reply to their comment and basically say that i would never fake anything and also flood the comments with like oh my god this is so real i can't believe this i don't know i think that's pretty funny just like make them think they're insane so yeah one week from today mark your calendars tomorrow at 11 a.m est my crossplay smp is going live now with this smp you won't be able to buy every single item from the shop as we still want players to have to grind for certain items as well as in-game money because in my opinion at least buying everything from the shop is incredibly boring and i think the grind is what makes it fun we spent an insane amount of time on this server and while we do have an economy shop and auction house there are some things in the server that are going to be insanely rare as they're not 
not in the shop. For example, the first couple people who get to the end and find elytras will hold one of the most expensive items in the whole server as elytras aren't purchasable in the shop. There are also ranks you can buy with in-game money that give you access to more commands, meaning there's another goal than just being the richest on the server. And finally, you can team with others, you can betray others, and you can grief and loot anyone's base. That is all perfectly okay. It's hard to fit everything in 60 seconds, but I hope to see you there tomorrow. I told my server if they can beat this parkour in one try, I would give them $1,000. Okay, we have our first participant. Okay, that was underwhelming. Maybe this person will do better. Oh my gosh, this person is killing it. No way he's actually doing this right now. This person might bankrupt me. Okay, well, close enough. Come on, dude, you can do it. Oh my god, no way, this person didn't even jump. Our fourth participant, will they make it past the first jump? Wow. Oh my god, this is so sad. I'm I'm so sorry. Wow, they just disappeared. Okay, okay, you got this. Please make it past the first jump. What the hell? How can nobody do the first jump? Our last contender. Okay? 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 Is bro gonna bankrupt me? Is he cheating? Hold on. Last second, he's moving his little arm. And he fell too. Thank you all for being horrible at parkour. There's a secret on my server. So yesterday was day one of my new SMP, and it went pretty well. But I put a secret around the spawn. It's been over 24 hours since the server released, and still nobody has found it. Around the spawn are 10 hidden NPCs, however, 7 of them you must have an elytra to find, while 3 of them you can find without an elytra. Multiple players on the server have now found an elytra, but still, nobody has found all 10 NPCs. In fact, to my knowledge, nobody has found more than 3 of them. But if you are the first person on the server to find these NPCs and post them in the NPC hunt channel in our Discord, you will be awarded with 5 crate keys of your choosing. From these crates, you can get in-game currency as well as mending books, diamonds, XP bottles, and more. So I guess we'll see how long this takes. Here's the best way to make money on my Minecraft server. So right when you spawn into the world, do slash wild to teleport you into the wild, you can go mining and sell your ores, which sell for a good amount of money in the shop, and with that money you can buy sugarcane. Now sugarcane sells for $10 each, which is good money on my server, especially with sugarcane being farmable. And once you have 15k, you can buy a cow spawner, and if you have a looting sword, the leather sells for a good amount as well. Once you get more money, you can buy shulker spawners, which drop shulker shells that sell for $300 each, or even wither skeleton spawners that drop heads that sell for 5k each. With this money, you can buy ranks, with the first one being 200k and giving you an extra home. This is very beneficial, as you can now have a home in the end, and a home in the overworld, or even just two separate bases. Minecraft 1.20 releases today, so here's everything that's new in 60 seconds. Bamboo block. 9 bamboo makes the bamboo block, and you can also turn this into ugly bamboo planks. Calibrated skulk Sensor. This is just a redstone thingy. Piglin mob head. New mob head. Very cool. Cherry grove biome. Peak is the best color, so I love this biome. Chiseled bookshelf. You can place up to six books in these, and they could be good for decoration. Sniffer. New mob that can be hatched from their egg. That gives you torch flowers. These flowers and pitcher pods can be planted, and farmer villagers can also farm them. Archaeology. Use brush. Find things. Make pottery. Hanging signs. It's like a normal sign, but hanging. New music discs. Can be found in sus gravel. Trail ruins. Contain sus gravel and sand, and you can also find the sniffer egg here. Camel, spawns in desert villages and can be bred with cacti. Netherite upgrade, found in bastions and is now the only way to get netherite armor. And smithing templates, lets you customize your armor. Here's how to join my Minecraft server on Bedrock and Java edition. On Java, all you have to do is click on multiplayer, go to add server, and in the server address, type vivsmp.net and you're done. Now on Bedrock, click play, click servers, scroll to the bottom of the list, click add server, you can put anything for the server name, and the server address is vivsmp.net, and use port 19132, and you're ready to start playing. Minecraft put a huge secret in the 1.20 update. If you stand in the new cherry grove biome and type ajmox 9 l420 1872 xd you will be teleported into a secret area with villagers all around. These villagers also have a god named Tobuscus that sits on top of his throne giving carrots to anyone who finds him. This is a really 
weird feature that Mojang decided to add, and I'm not sure what the significance is, so can anyone fill me in? I asked three different players on my server if they wanted to try my escape room, and if they completed it, I'd give them $10,000. In-game money, by the way. Now, this is the escape room, and if you recognize this, it's actually from a video I made 25 days ago where I got this comment saying weirdly specific scenario. The room looks like this, and in the chest there's a fishing rod, sticks, a bucket, and a puffer fish. Player 1 broke the ice while there was no block underneath it, meaning the ice didn't turn into water. Player 2 also broke the ice, and player 3 again broke the ice, meaning if they watched this weirdly specific scenario, they would be $10,000 richer. What they had to do was light the fishing rod on fire to destroy the snow above, revealing an anvil with four candles. They then had to place the candles on the ice block and once again light the fishing rod on fire to light the candles. They then had to wait for the ice to turn into water and use their bucket to swim out. One of the most annoying changes Minecraft recently made has to deal with armor, and I noticed this on my SMP a few days ago and it drove me crazy. Before this change, when you enchanted a piece of armor, it would have a very obvious glow, but now when you enchant armor, this glow isn't really obvious. I mean, if you're about to PvP a player and you see this, it's not super obvious they have enchanted armor. So Mojang, please bring back the old glow. What's the best way to hide your base on the Viv SMP? Well, when you go into the world, you can spawn within a 10,000 block radius of 0, 0. So ideally, you want to get outside of that radius, or else your base is going to get completely raided like mine did. So obviously, the farther out you are, the safer your base is, but since you can't buy elytras from the shop, players are selling them on the auction house for around 20k. So the best way to hide your base is to build a starter base and grind until you have enough for an elytra, then go out to the end and fly for thousands of blocks and build your base super far out. But even then, other players may have the same idea you do and could find your base, so just build it inside an island. In 1.20, they completely changed how to get netherite armor. So before 1.20, if you wanted to get netherite armor, you needed to mine ancient debris, smelt it into netherite scraps, then with four netherite scraps, you can finally make one netherite ingot. And if you combine this ingot with a diamond tool or armor, it would turn it into netherite. Now that's pretty complicated, but the new 1.20 way is to do exactly the same stuff, except now you also have to get a netherite upgrade smithing template, which can be found in bastions, with a guaranteed two in every treasure room. Meaning you need to find four of these to get a full set of netherite armor, or do you? Because you don't. You can actually duplicate this smithing template like this in a crafting table, which isn't that bad, especially if you have a fortune 3 pickaxe. So honestly, this new way of getting netherite isn't even that big of a deal. So the new way of Minecraft PvP is something called crystal PvP, where you try exploding your enemies by placing down obsidian and putting end crystals on the obsidian as fast as you can. You can also use respawn anchors to explode your enemy as well, and you may think this would make PvP fights last just a few seconds, but the other meta is to hold 10 million total items in your inventory so you never die, making these fights last for a fairly long time. Now I'm gonna be honest, when I load up Minecraft, sweating as much as this guy does while spamming obsidian and constantly switching between the millions of totems in my inventory does not sound like an enjoyable method of PvP to me, and that's why we disabled it on my SMP. So if you're looking for an SMP with no crystal PvP, you can join here. So the new 1.20 update is out, and in this update, you can place mob heads on note blocks, and it will play the sound of the mob when the note is played, so I thought, this would be great for trolling. If you have a stupid friend with a house, and you build a bunch of note blocks with mob heads and a redstone clock attached to each one underneath the house... Before this, people would use doors as the annoying sound, but with these, the sound is so much better, and if your friend doesn't know about this update, they'll be so confused as to why there's a bunch of mob sounds under their base. Today is the highly anticipated Wood Planks tier list. Starting with the best wood in the game, Cherry Wood, because pink is the best. Now another wood, Mangrove. I'm gonna have to put this in the worst tier, I just think it's so ugly and I can't imagine building a house with this garbage. Oak Wood is another S tier. It's OG and actually looks really good. Now, Birch. I know this isn't a popular opinion, but I think the planks actually look really good, and I'm gonna put it one under S tier. Acacia wood. Nah, what the hell is this? F tier for me. Jungle wood, slightly better. It's okay. Dark oak. Now, I know in some builds this wood works well, and it looks fine in the Woodland Mansion, but I'm just not a fan. I feel the same way about spruce wood too, but I do like it a lot more. Bamboo. It's alright, you know, definitely not the worst. And finally, the two nether woods are okay. 
I like how unique they are and it just adds more to the game, but that's about it. Did you know in Minecraft, the void in the end teleports you to the overworld while the void in the overworld kills you? This is a new feature they added in Minecraft 1.20 and I didn't believe it when I first tried it, but as you can see, this actually works. So from now on, if you're in the end and want to go back to the overworld quickly, just jump in the void. Now it's no secret that I think the Minecraft community has the worst judgment out of almost any gaming community due to the fact that they pick the absolute worst mobs to win the mob vote. So I'm going to tell you which mobs I would have picked for the mob vote because apparently I seem to think my ideas are so much better. 2017, we had the Phantom, Great Hunger, the Barnacle, and the Wildfire. Now we all know what the Phantom is, but the Barnacle would suck you underwater with its tentacles and the Hunger would sink into the ground and surprise you if you walked over it. Now I would have picked the Wildfire because it's just a blaze on steroids and makes nether fortresses way harder than they currently are. 2020, Glow Squid, Moo Bloom, and Isolager. The literal only correct answer is the Isolager. 2021, LA, Glare, which spawns to alert players in areas so dark that hostile mobs can spawn, and the Copper Golem, which is attracted to copper buttons. But I actually would have picked the LA here, and the recent mob vote, I honestly would have picked the Tough Golem over the Sniffer. This mob is garbage. The Camel is the most OP rideable mob in Minecraft. Let me explain. So the Camel is one of the new 1.20 mobs and it has a unique dashing ability, but that's not what makes it OP. Instead, the Camel is the tallest rideable mob in Minecraft, and because of that, it's able to walk up one and a half blocks perfectly fine, which the horse can't. And also because of the Camel's height, you can ride it and hostile mobs won't be able to attack you. Zombies can't hit you, piglins can't hit you, spiders can't hit you, even endermen and wither skeletons can't hit you, it's absolutely insane. So while the horse is good for travel, the Camel can fit two players on it, is good for travel, can go up taller blocks, and makes you invincible against certain mobs. Minecraft, but I can't touch the color green. Okay, so this is actually a good spawn. Oh my gosh, I have to be more careful. I forgot I'm doing a challenge. I need to get some wood. I think that tree is close to the sand. I can actually just mine the sand and place it to avoid green super easy. Now we have ourselves a wood pickaxe. Gonna get this stone. Now we have a stone pickaxe. Oh nice, my first bit of iron. Oh shoot, there's some green. There's a dang skeleton spawner. I kind of want to see what's in these chests though. The copper's kind of green, isn't it? I don't know. I'm gonna get rid of it anyway. Just place the torch. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Okay, fine. We're good. Oh my god. Well, there's a pig here. Thanks for the food, man. Murder the sheep too. Now with this water, we need to find some lava. Oh, nice. There's lava down there. I can't believe I'm actually entering the nether. That bastion is right over this green stuff. Gotta be super careful. Good thing I know where all the gold is here. <sighs> I just realized. Wouldn't these be considered green? I, I, I think they are. God damn. <laughs> I just came across something in Minecraft that blew my mind. It's a feature that's been in the game for six years and I had no idea until yesterday. You can craft end rods. What? This recipe was added six years ago in 2017 with a popped chorus fruit and a blaze rod and I had no idea this whole time and I actually can't believe it. For the last six years, I always thought the only way to get end rods was to find them in an end city and pick them up, but... No, apparently you could just craft these the entire time, which makes me wonder what else has been in the game forever that I have no idea about. Y'all seem to like when I make fun of you, and oh boy, y'all have given me a lot of material. Today's episode is about mass psychosis. On a recent video, I got these two comments that say I mined iron with a wooden pickaxe, which is crazy. Here's the footage. These two are literally having hallucinations about Minecraft. I actually can't believe there's two comments saying this. On this recent video, the challenge was to not touch the color green. And again, people are having hallucinations about me touching green when it just didn't happen. Right after the cut to the nether, you can slightly see that he touched the warped leaf block. Man walked on green stuff when he entered the nether, so it's completely fake. He was standing on green at 47 seconds. Okay, okay, let's see the footage. Wait, did you see it? Oh my god, it's actually not green. I can't believe it. Seriously, how hard is it to just not comment on stuff you don't know? 
I busted 36 1.20 myths in Minecraft and actually found out that the hanging signs can be used to keep mobs out of your base. Similar to how mobs can't walk across carpet if there is a string under it, mobs can't enter an area if there is a hanging sign in their path. I also found out that if you're riding a camel, the warden actually can't attack you, which is extremely overpowered. I answered questions like, can you put armor trim on an elytra? If you put gold trim on a non-gold piece of armor, will piglins attack? Can you breed bees with pink pet? Can you break a sniffer egg by stomping on it? The answer to all these questions and more can be found on the full video, so check it out. Minecraft, but if I see the color blue, the video ends. I know how these videos typically go, but hopefully this one's different. Oh my god, we actually got a good spawn. I'm gonna say it. Mojang needs to make this mob drop something useful. Mojang needs to make this mob useful, period. Mojang needs to remove this mob or at least rework it. Mojang needs to add all these mobs. Mojang needs to add more endgame content. Mojang Mojang needs to upgrade these. Mojang needs to add an ancient compass in a dungeon to find ancient cities better. Mojang needs to update the end. I'm obsessed with making ancient cities better if you can't tell and I came across this reddit post asking what if each dimension had its own warden. With the warden found in the overworld, the hollowed found in the nether, and the stalker found in the end. This is literally perfect. This is endgame content plus making every dimension better. Please Mojang, add endgame content. Now I'm a smart person so I know that Java is better than Bedrock, but with that being said, there are a few features that are in Bedrock Edition that I wish were in Java. Like how in Bedrock, the leaves of trees actually change color depending on if it's snowing or not. Another minor one is how on Bedrock, armor stands actually have arms. Now a major one that would change the way Java is played is that on Bedrock, you can attach a lead to a boat, making this a great early game way to transport villagers. The Bedrock Wither is also incredibly strong and actually spawns Wither skeletons, which I think is really cool. You can also dye the water in cauldrons, which actually lets you dye your leather armor too. There are a few other features on Bedrock, like being able to bone meal sugar cane and being able to place blocks without looking at another block, but I don't really care for these to be in Java. Unfortunately, I talk badly about Mojang quite often, not because I don't like their updates, but because I feel like they could do more. I mean, some more wood, a different type of bookshelf, a different type of sign, and a useless mob? Really? But I want to change it up and talk about some updates I really like, like the cave update. Before this, caves were so boring and mundane, but now they're so massive, and with random world generation, there's always a difference with each cave. I also love when they expanded the end and added end cities, because this gave Minecraft endgame content, and with elytras, the ability to fly in survival mode along with the addition of shulker boxes was a perfect incentive to explore one of these cities. There's a lot more that I like, but if I had to add one more, it would definitely be the nether update, because this is what it looked like before. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Almost every time I start a new Minecraft world, there is always one type of food farm I instantly make, and I believe it's the best type of food farm early game. It's not a farm with seeds that you have to constantly replant and craft the food each time, and it's not a farm where you have to constantly breed animals and kill them over and over again to cook their food. So what is it? It's an automatic cooked chicken farm, and all you need is a bunch of eggs to hatch chickens in this one-by-one -one area, and honestly, not that much redstone goes into it. It's fairly simple. The chickens in here lay eggs that go into this hopper and get shot out here where the chickens are caught on fire when they grow up, giving us cooked chicken in this chest. It's fun to build, super easy, fully automatic, and the food restores a lot of hunger. I saw this data pack that makes it impossible to die in Minecraft, so I thought I'd accept the challenge. Alright, we're in. I'm gonna see if I can drown. Yeah, my bubbles aren't even going down, so this is impossible. Guess I'm gonna get some wood. Oh my god, that's why it's so hard to die. Before I build a massive tower. I want to see if I can even take fall damage. Oh, I can. That's good to know. Okay, there's no way I survive this though, right? If I survive this, I'm going to be so mad. Oh my god, I literally took no damage. I want to see if I can die by entity cramming. Okay, that didn't work. I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. I think this works with armor stands though. Okay, I'm going in. I guess this doesn't work. Screw this, I'm going in creative. Gonna spawn a bunch of chickens. Okay, so they're dying to entity cramming, and if I jump in, oh my god, I don't even die to entity cramming. What if I jump in the void? No way, right? I literally can't even die to void damage. I'm all out of ideas. 
Does anyone else have any? Mojang banned my Minecraft server. Now, if you tried to join VivSMP.net the past few days, you may have noticed that it wasn't available, and this made me panic. Thankfully, players were still able to join with our old IP, but after a while, I put VivSMP in this website, and yup, we got blocked by Mojang themselves. I went to their website and submitted an appeal request to find out what I did wrong because I had absolutely no clue what it could have been. And after Mojang kindly banned my server on Friday night and took the weekend off, they sent me an email Monday saying thanks. We'll get back to you in one to two more days. Thanks for that, by the way. But it turns out we got blocked because on our store website, I didn't have a contact email. I just had a Discord people could contact. I added an email and yeah, our server is back up vivsmp.net check it out so i'm gonna be honest i really have no idea what half of the redstone items do anymore i understand redstone itself it's pretty simple just basically wiring and even the redstone repeater i understand it basically acts like an extension cord the redstone torches keep the wiring lit and the observer keeps track of any block update in front of it and gives off a redstone signal but other than that what the hell does this do i mean seriously it turns on and off i don't get it at all and frankly i don't care enough to look it up and now we have the calibrated skulk sensor and it's just all so confusing now. Also honey blocks are used in redstone, slime blocks are too. There are also certain blocks that don't stick to slime blocks and certain blocks that do and help with redstone and oh my god it's just so much. How much TNT can my PC handle? I made this video with my old ancient PC and it actually did fairly well but with this thing oh man how much does it take to blow this thing up? Let's start it off with 10,000 TNT. Oh, wow. Okay, it's actually kind of lagging. I didn't really expect this. It's over. I think these particles are just a little behind because all the TNT is gone. Okay, that wasn't actually that bad, but my PC still stands. That's the impact so far. Now let's try 50,000 TNT. Here goes nut. Uh, what? Here goes nothing. All right, that time it worked. Of course, we got the lag again. Oh my god, I'm so sorry you have to suffer this explosion for so long, my guy. And it looks like it's done. And this is the massive crater that 50,000 TNT leaves. I'm going for the big boy numbers now. 500,000 TNT. Okay, I actually think this was the limit. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes now and my game is frozen. This is going to be the most useful information you hear all day. I just learned a fact about cats that after 10 years of playing Minecraft, I never knew about, mainly because I've never had a cat as a pet. But if you have a cat as a pet, it will purposely seek out the nearest chest and sit on top of it, which makes it so you can't even open the chest, which is one reason to never have these as a pet. But while I'm giving random cat facts, I'll give you another one. If you have a cat as a pet and go to sleep at night, you'll wake up to your cat bringing you a random gift. This includes rabbit's foot, rabbit's hide, string, rotten flesh, flesh, feathers, raw chicken, and even a phantom membrane. So if you're playing on a server with phantoms disabled, or for some reason want any of these other items, cats can help. Minecraft 1.20 came out with 16 different armor trims that allow you to customize your armor, and I'm gonna tell you how to get each and every one as well as what they look like. The sentry armor trim is found in the pillager outpost, the dune armor trim is found in the desert pyramid, the coast armor trim is found in shipwrecks, the wild armor trim is found in jungle temples, the tide armor trim is found in ocean monuments by killing an elder guardian and has a 20% drop rate. The ward armor trim is found in ancient cities, the vex armor trim is found in woodland mansions, the rib trim is found in nether fortresses, the snout trim is found in bastion remnants, eye trim is found in stronghold chests, spire is found in end cities, silence trim is found in ancient cities as well, and the wayfinder, razor, shaper, and host trims are all found in trail ruins. We just updated my SMP to 1.20 to include these, so check it out. There is one world record speedrun in Minecraft that is so skillful and complicated that the speedrun is less than a second long. Of course, I'm talking about the obsidian speed speedrun. This is a speedrun where players try to find obsidian and make a in record time, and this user managed to do it in 0.622 seconds. Here's the run.
Absolutely impressive. Yesterday, I talked about the 0.622 second Obsidian speedrun world record, which is insanely fast, but there's a speedrun that is even faster, coming in at 0.132 seconds. This speedrun is for the fastest time to break a beehive, and of course, you could just break the beehive with your hand, but that's not the fastest way. The fastest way is to break a beehive with an axe, but in order for this to happen in an actual run, you'd have to spawn next to a ruined portal with an axe in the chest, then have a beehive nearby to quickly break, and that's exactly what happened. Here's the run. You can disable the warden from spawning in survival Minecraft. This is helpful if you're trying to raid an ancient city without the fear of any warden spawning, and it's actually really simple to do. This works because Skulk Shriekers, which spawn wardens, have a cooldown of 10 seconds, so if you have a Shrieker constantly going off in an already loaded chunk, no other Shriekers around you will ever spawn a warden. But since the Shrieker is going off every 10 seconds, we don't want any wardens to spawn in that area, and in order to make it so wardens don't spawn, you can add carpet around the Shrieker as wardens aren't able to spawn on carpet. This video goes over this mechanic in much further detail, but it's overall very simple and a pretty easy build. Minecraft hardcore YouTubers be like. Okay guys, so welcome to episode one of my hardcore Minecraft series. In this video, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple and just find diamonds, get full diamond armor, make an enchantment table, go to the nether, find netherite, get full netherite armor, go to the end, kill the dragon, get an elytra, and then build this. Pretty good progress for episode one, I'd say. There is a speed run that is zero seconds. A few a few days ago I talked about a 0.622 second speedrun and a 0.132 second speedrun and I thought surely there isn't a speedrun faster than that, but I was wrong. This 0 second speedrun is the speedrun for fastest death in Minecraft, but how is that possible? Well, how Minecraft speedruns work is that the timer doesn't actually start until the player moves, meaning that to get a 0 second speedrun you would have to not move the entire time, and that's exactly how this was possible. This player spawned into an iceberg and quickly suffocated, giving him the zero second run. I'm out of content, so I'm gonna react to the Minecraft subreddit. So this guy made a GTA style character switch using the slash camera command, which is pretty cool since, yeah, this looks exactly like Grand Theft Auto, and I had no idea the slash camera command was even in the game. This guy has the average Hypixel Bed Wars player monitor, which I'll be honest, if I had a monitor like this, I probably wouldn't let anyone know as it would eliminate my chances of making any friends. But this one, this is insane. This guy got 26 achievements from one single arrow, and some of them don't even make sense to me, like the iron pick achievement. Don't you get that from crafting an iron pick? You don't just pick it up and get the achievement, right? Also, he gets the hot stuff achievement, and I thought you got that one from picking up lava with a bucket, but he doesn't do this in the video. Let me know in the comments, because I don't get it. So a while ago, I made a video about this data pack that makes it impossible to die, so I challenged it. I tried to drown that didn't work. I tried to entity cram myself. That didn't work. I tried to fall to my death. That didn't work. I even jumped into the void and nope, that didn't work either. So me having the massive brain that I have, I decided to ask my viewers what ideas they have and all these people turned into complete nerds and decided to tell me that slash kill would work as if I didn't know that. So here you go guys, slash kill. You've completely ruined the challenge now. Thank you. Minecraft changed this player's in-game name. Let me explain. So about 10 years ago, this player tried logging into an account that he says already existed, but for some reason couldn't get into it, so he did the only logical thing. Make a new account and name it Mojang Sucks Dick. A few months later, Mojang caught wind of this guy's username and later changed it to No We Don't. The Minecraft world record speedrun is 7 minutes and 45 seconds. This is an insanely fast run, but one of the longest speedruns in Minecraft is the all advancement speedrun, where you load up a random world and see how long it takes to get every single advancement, and the record for that is 2 hours and 33 minutes. This is absolutely insane, as some of the advancements you have to get in this time are 2 birds 1 arrow, where you have to use a crossbow that has the piercing enchantment and land a shot that kills two phantoms in a single strike, serious dedication where you have to completely use a netherite hoe until it breaks, a complete catalog where you need to tame every single cat variant, adventuring time where you have to visit 52 different biomes in the overworld, uneasy alliance where you have to transport a ghast from the nether to the overworld, and how did we get here where you have to have 
every single status effect applied to yourself at once. This run was done by Feinberg, and I've included a link to his run in the description if you want to check it out. Minecraft has existed for over 10 years, and in that time, features have been added and removed, and I want to talk about a few features that Minecraft did remove, such as this giant brick pyramid that was added to the game a long time ago. This pyramid served no purpose, it was literally just a giant pyramid. But a pretty big feature is that mobs used to run away from creepers when they were about to blow up. Nowadays, mobs don't change their behavior at all, but back then they would run super fast to try and get away. Now, you all most likely know about this next feature, but you used to be able to craft god apples in survival mode. Now, the only way to get these is to find them in chests or just use creative mode to spawn them. But many years ago, you just needed eight gold blocks and an apple to make this enchanted golden apple. When bunnies were first introduced, you may remember there was a super low percent chance that the killer bunny would spawn, but now this bunny has no chance of spawning, it's been removed. I entered the nether without ever seeing what my world looks like. Believe it or not, I didn't use a custom texture pack or anything like that, I did this with my entire monitor turned off. See, I have two monitors, and I also live stream every Saturday, so I decided to play Minecraft and see how far we can go with my chat telling me what to do and essentially playing the game for me and me just listening to their directions. The most difficult part by far was crafting, as people had to tell me when to stop moving my mouse and where to move it, but we made an iron pickaxe and later found diamonds, used the diamonds to make a pickaxe, used the pickaxe to mine obsidian, and used the obsidian to create and light a nether portal. I then spent about five hours in the nether and we never made it outside of where we spawned, so I gave up. There's only so much that I can take, but not bad. Minecraft subreddit time. This guy built the Statue of Liberty in Minecraft out of copper so that it changed color over time and it looks pretty sick. This player ran over to his enderman farm to try and get some XP to enchant some items, maybe repair his armor with mending, when he decided to eat and somehow eating made him clip through the wall and fall to his death. This is why you don't play Bedrock, guys. Speaking of reasons why not to play Bedrock, this guy was just building a wall and died. Yeah, Bedrock is cursed. This guy asked, is using an online world for your map considered cheating? And my answer is absolutely yes. It completely eliminates the randomness of Minecraft, and also why we don't share the seed on my server. This next one is hilarious because I love chaos, and this guy didn't understand respawn anchor mechanics and blew it up, instantly killing him and also blowing up the TNT next to it, which killed him after his totem popped and made him lose his hardcore world. I have a bone to pick with you guys. So a few times now I've mentioned in videos how I wish the warden dropped something useful or like a key that takes you to a new dimension because I think it would be fun content and I just like the fact that the warden currently drops nothing useful. And for some reason, every time I bring this up, I get a ton of comments saying that the dev said you aren't supposed to kill the warden. Guys, that's my whole point. The point of me requesting new features and giving ideas as to what Minecraft should add in the future is because I don't like what the devs are currently doing with certain features and I think they can be improved. Just because the devs say something once doesn't mean they'll stick by it forever and even if they do stand by it, they can still add like a tiny advantage to killing it instead of nothing. Also, I don't even care what the devs say. That's the whole point of me giving my opinion on what would be a cool addition to the game. Minecraft, but if I see the color brown, the video ends. Okay. Okay, surely this will be an easy challenge. Okay, I didn't spawn in an oak forest. That's a good start. Minecraft speedrunning is a joke. I saw this video saying that modern day Minecraft speedruns are a joke and man, I gotta argue with this guy. So I love watching speedruns and I think it's really cool to see how far players can push the game and what they can discover along the way and modern day speedruns typically have a player running 15 or so instances of Minecraft at the same time to find a seed next to an ocean quickly, which of course is super sweaty, but I still think it's cool. Players then use their pie chart to find a buried treasure, and once that's done, they make a portal in possibly the coolest way possible. Then in the nether, players use F3 to look at entity count and pinpoint bastions and fortresses. Once in the overworld, they throw two eyes and use a calculator to find the exact area to place their nether portal in the nether to go to the stronghold. Then, once in the end, they use beds to kill the dragon in seven minutes. Minutes. This
This guy's point was that speedrunning is a joke because how sweaty it is, but I honestly think that's what makes it cool. This is the easiest way to kill the Java Wither, and this is the easiest way to kill the Bedrock Wither. That is because on Bedrock, the Wither has twice the amount of health as Java's Wither, destroys entire chunks, instantly killing you if you're underground, spawns two Wither Skeletons at half HP, and at its halfway point, stops taking damage from arrows entirely. This is just one difference Bedrock and Java have. Another is that Java places blocks like this, Bedrock places blocks like this, Bedrock can bone meal sugarcane, Java can't bone meal sugarcane, and a ton of other differences that have to do with the fire aspect enchantment, looting enchantment, durability of crossbows and fishing rods, color of water, dying certain mobs, boat mechanics, and so much more. I made this video going over a ton of differences between both versions of the game, so check it out. This, I'm sorry, is the average Hypixel Bed Wars player. I saw a bunch of videos like this of this guy playing Bed Wars and having this insane movement and I had the bright idea. I should try this. All right, here we go. So I just learned how to find the seed of any Minecraft server and it's pretty crazy. So basically you install this mod Java only called Seed Cracker X and with that mod you have to then find structures located throughout the world, put them in this program and after five or so structures this program knows the exact seed of the world you're playing on. So that's exactly what someone did on my server and then sold the seed to another player for a hundred million dollars. So yeah new money making method dropped I guess. The giant and killer bunny are two mobs that don't spawn naturally but can only be spawned with commands. But there is one extremely rare mob that nobody thinks about when they consider rare mobs and it's a mob that can be found in survival mode with no commands and can be found in only one biome in the entire game. Now that kind of sounds a lot like a villager because villagers have five biomes their homes can be in. The desert, plains, savanna, snowy, and taiga biomes. However there is a secret sixth biome and that's the type of villager I'm talking about in this video and that's the jungle villager. That's right, for some reason even though there are no jungle villages in Minecraft, there is such a thing as a jungle villager that has his own outfit and works just like a normal villager. This villager can be spawned by breeding or can be found naturally if a village in a separate biome also has a part of it in a jungle biome, but that's incredibly rare. So if you want a jungle village with jungle villagers, I guess you have to make it yourself. I did a TikTok NPC stream. So Pinky Doll has been doing these TikTok lives where she makes herself sound like an NPC and she said she makes roughly $3,000 per stream off of TikTok gifts. If you don't know, TikTok gifts are essentially what you donate to a streamer and each gift gives the streamer a different amount of money. Here's a chart that shows off what amount some of the gifts give. So of course I had to try this for myself and see what it's like. I haven't done a face reveal though, so I only showed my Minecraft skin and I did this NPC stream for an entire hour. The stream ended up getting 8,000 likes and I made 49 cents. Beating Minecraft with nothing. This is something that GeoSquare did a few years ago and it's one of the most impressive runs in Minecraft. This was done on a set seed and the entire run took under two hours with of course the end portal being pre-lit. But how can you destroy the end crystals and kill the dragon with no items? Well GeoSquare purposely got launched up in the air by the dragon onto each platform platform to take out each crystal, and while he was falling to the ground, exited out of the game and logged back in to negate fall damage. Finally, once all crystals were destroyed, he killed the dragon with just his hand. If you've ever watched a Minecraft speedrun, you've probably noticed that on Java, you can use a boat to break your fall. I don't know how this works, but it does. And even though you can use a boat to break your fall, sometimes you still die, and that's because there's certain heights that kill you. If you fall from 10 blocks high, you take no damage. If you fall from 200 blocks, high, you also take no damage. But if you fall from 12, 13, 49, 51, 111, 114, 198, 202, 310, or 315 blocks high, you take damage and at certain heights die. So while boats are very good for getting down quickly, it can still be dangerous. Minecraft added a brand new feature in 1.20, but it only works if you're in hardcore mode. So if you're new to Minecraft, you've probably never seen the structure before, and that's because it only spawns in hardcore. This area can be found deep underground and gives the player a ton of OP loot to help them beat hardcore Minecraft, but the one thing you have to do to get all this loot is to make a ton of noise. Jump all over the place, blow up TNT, shoot arrows, 
and ta-da! Netherite armor. Smash the like button to help out some new Minecraft players. If I get XP, I die. All right, and we are in. As always, I'm just gonna get some of this wood. And I do wonder how am I ever going to be able to get anything if XP will kill me because there's coal right here. But that XP will kill me if I get it. But I guess I could lure it down like that. There we go. And we're now we've picked up coal. And we are still alive. Oh, oh my god! Minecraft, but XP expands the border. Alright, and we are in. So how am I gonna get XP in this tiny one by one? There's cows over there, but I can't really reach up there. I can't get wood either. I feel like my best bet here is to literally just dig straight down and hope to run into a cave and kill a zombie or a skeleton or something. But the other option is to wait for night to come and then kill those mobs. Alright, it's completely dark out. Where are all the mobs? Oh my god, don't tell me they spawn only inside the border. Alright, no mobs are spawning, so I guess my only way to get XP is to mine all the way down and hope I find a cave. You know, as I sit here and mine this cobblestone, I'm having the realization that I'm probably doing way too much for a short video. Oh my god, I made it to bedrock. You're probably wondering, how is there no deep slate but you're in bedrock? I'm playing on 1.17, that's the only version this data pack works on. I found gravel though! So that's cool. Okay, oh, that's I made a mistake. Last week I made a video about the rarest villager in Minecraft and I talked about how it's a villager that rarely spawns naturally as the five villages we all know can be found in the desert, plains, savanna, snowy, and taiga biomes. And this villager that I thought was the most rare doesn't have a village in its biome but still somehow has its own skin and that's the jungle villager. Now obviously this is more rare than all the other villagers because with this villager in order to spawn naturally there has to be a village in another biome that has parts of it that also go into the jungle biome. But even though this is incredibly rare, there is another type of villager that is more rare than this, and that's the swamp villager. I don't know if Mojang meant to add villages to these biomes at some point and just decided not to, but this villager is more rare than the one found in the jungle biome because swamps are more rare than jungles are. So here it is, the official rarest villager. <sighs> Guys, I'm under fire again. I've yet again been accused of cheating, but this time the comments are more stupid than ever. The video in question is my Minecraft, but XP expands the border video where, yeah, when I pick up XP, the border expands. But that didn't stop the big brain comments such as, there is no way he reached bedrock using his hand. Well, here's some footage of me mining stone with just my hand. This other comment says, bro was walking outside the border in the beginning. Yes, in my Minecraft, if the edge of the border is touching a block, then you are able to walk all over that block, even though it does look like you're walking outside the border. I also got this comment, ain't no way bro spent his life mining and totally didn't go game mode 1. You know what, there are a lot of comments that seem to think there's no way I resisted the urge to go in creative mode, so I actually uploaded the entire footage from this shore as background gameplay to a video on my second channel, so take that non-believers. Wow, this was amazing timing. The new Minecraft snapshot is out and it's actually a really good one. So I made two videos this week about villagers and yeah, now that this snapshot is out, this is the third one. Because this snapshot focuses greatly on villages and it makes it so that not all villagers are the same. Now swamp villagers and jungle villagers have a use, which before they didn't because they gave the same trades every other villager gave. But now in this snapshot, each type of villager gives a different item. So plains villagers will give different items than taiga villagers give and so on, meaning that now you'll have to get villagers from all across the world to get the items you want. Some players are upset with this feature because now it'll be way more difficult to get the items you want, but for me I like when there's a lot to do in a game, and even though this is certainly more difficult than setting up one single villager breeder and being set for the rest of the game, it adds another layer of stuff to do, and for me, that's a W. Oh yeah, Mojang also made it some more diamond spawn in Deep Slate. 2B2T is in trouble. So Minecraft 
Minecraft recently updated its EULA, and while some people are certainly overreacting to it, I recommend checking out this video on the matter, one of the biggest changes directly affects 2v2t. If you don't know, 2v2t is the oldest Minecraft server, having a map that never resets and has been the same for 10 plus years. If you're unfamiliar with servers, this means that their storage is incredibly high and costs thousands of dollars a month to keep online. So how does 2v2t make money? Well, 2v2t has a max of 100 players that can log onto the server at a time, and if anyone else tries to join, they get put in a queue. And to make money, 2v2t sells priority queue passes for 20 bucks a month. Now obviously 2v2t has to make money to stay online, so I'd rather them sell a priority queue than crate keys or ranks, these just make no sense on an anarchy server. But with Minecraft's new EULA change, priority queues are now non-EULA compliant, meaning that 2v2t will be shut down if they don't make a change. You may know how did we get here as Minecraft's hardest advancement, requiring the player to apply every status effect on themselves, but for some players, this is incredibly easy to get. As someone got this advancement 4 minutes after starting their world, but it was done by a robot. Regardless, I think it's really interesting to see what a perfect run looks like and how quickly one of the hardest things in Minecraft can be achieved. This is an insane run, where at the end here, the player drinks a bunch of potions to get status effects, then quickly goes to the overworld to get mining fatigue from a monument, then goes to the end and sets up two beacons to get more status effects, gets shot by a shulker to levitate, and gets blown up by a wither to get his final status effect. Also, for 300k, I'm doing a Q&A on my second channel, so ask questions on my Twitter or in the comments of this video if you want to participate. There are so many items in Minecraft, but only a few you can keep in your inventory at once, so here's a list of a few items you should always keep. Like the loom. This item... Actually, hold on, what does this item do? Oh yeah, this item adds patterns and colors to your banner, an obviously very essential item. Another one you can't leave your base without is the lodestone, as now, instead of taking all the muscle power to press F3 and read your coordinates, you can instead craft a compass, place down a lodestone, right click the lodestone with the compass, and now your compass will point you toward the direction of that cool mob spawner you found. The final item you should never leave without is the composter, as this item can create one bone meal from seven bread, a very useful component in your travels. Minecraft, but the world is sand. Alright, and we are in. Now I have to be very careful, because if any block updates, then all of this is going to fall. But I do see a village over there so that's a good sign and that's fantastic it's already happening jesus christ i don't know if i can outrun this i'm gonna try though a villager must have opened a door or something and caused all of this to happen oh my god there's a village over there uh will i be able to reach it that is going kind of fast on my right here if i can jump on that i think that's farmland if i can jump on that i will be good oh my god yes i'm actually gonna reach it yes okay i made it i I'm safe. I actually had a lot more time than I thought I did, but here it comes. Wow. That is crazy. All those slimes are dying now. God dang it, I missed that. There we go. That's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. Ta-da! We have an axe. Okay, that was stupid. I, I, I don't even know what I was thinking there. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say automatic food farm? Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking of an automatic cooked chicken farm as these are fairly easy to make and restore three hunger per chicken. But what if I told you that you're missing out on the best food source of all, honey? Okay, I'm kind of joking, but at the same time, this really isn't that bad. Making a honey farm is probably easier than a chicken farm and honey bottles even restore the same amount of hunger as chicken chicken does. Although I don't blame you if you don't want honey to be your food source because this sound is disgusting. But regardless of that, honey is just underrated in general. Honey bottles can be used to craft sugar, meaning that you can get unlimited sugar with a honey bottle farm. Drinking honey removes the poison effect, the honey blocks that you can craft from four honey bottles don't stick to slime blocks and reduce fall damage by 80%, and that's pretty much all the honey propaganda that I have. I have a lot of Minecraft pet peeves, like when people don't fully cut down trees and just leave them floating, or when people just make square houses. But 
But my biggest pet peeve of all is when a creeper blows up and this is how the hole gets filled. That is not filling the hole. This is how you fill the hole. Like seriously, if you fill a hole with just one layer, then mobs will spawn underground and you'll just hear random mob noises while walking. I even hate when people fill holes like this because what if Mojang just decided to add a mob that spawns in one by one areas one day? So please, fill your creeper holes like an adult and fill the whole area. Also, I uploaded my 300k Q&A on my second channel, so check it out. I played Minecraft's most terrifying mod and it was terrifying. The premise around this mod is that Minecraft's iconic cave sounds typically mean nothing, but what if that wasn't the case? This mod introduces a mob called the Cave Dweller that has custom cave sounds that let the player know that the Cave Dweller is nearby. And when spotted by a player, this mob runs towards you extremely fast, has the ability to crouch, and even can crawl in order to kill you. I challenge myself to, uh, first and foremost, not cry, but to also kill this mob, and you can watch the full video on my channel, check it out. If you can finish this parkour, you win $50. This was the challenge I gave my viewers, and some people had a lot of trouble. But I want to thank FreshCut for letting this be possible. FreshCut is a new video sharing platform for gamers where you can upload clips from a stream or full-length videos. They have great discoverability for small creators and have a diamond shop where your followers can send you diamonds and you can cash them out for prizes. I even have my own account, so check it out. Link in the description. The course featured a ton of difficult obstacles like a Neo, ladder parkour, jumping off an open shulker, navigating through this, and the honey wall, which was by far the most difficult for people to get past. But finally, someone made it to the end of the course and failed on the last jump. So they tried again and fell at the honey ride. But finally, they beat the course and won $50. And then it took almost 90 minutes for someone to get second place. This guy was insane. And he taught me how to double Neo. Post Mortal is an advancement in Minecraft that you get when you die holding a totem. And this player achieved this in one second. Just kidding, that's way too slow. He got this advancement in 0 0.083 seconds. He loaded up the seed where he spawns right next to an iron golem, killing an evoker right next to the player and dropping the totem, and in the blink of an eye, hits the iron golem and gets the post mortal advancement. You may be wondering how he finished this in 0 0.083 seconds when the video is clearly longer than that, and according to him, the time timer doesn't start until your first input. Minecraft subreddit time. This player transformed the entire end in their survival world and it's just insane to me how creative people are, especially since every time I build a house I have to look up a YouTube tutorial. This guy was just chilling, drowning villagers as usual, when he stepped back and had a heart attack and died, but then got rebooted when he realized it's just his friend. Most normal bedrock gameplay incoming. Yeah, just randomly dying. This is like the 10th time I've seen this happen. This player was building a raid farm in the their hardcore world and didn't realize that shulkers don't render when they're far away. Rest in peace. Any idea for mob defense under my flying base? Good question. Torches. Just place torches, man. I had to include this one because it's just insane to me how Bedrock Edition is just riddled with the silliest bugs because this player literally just eats a carrot and magically goes through the wall and almost dies. How is this possible? Also, it seems like Minecraft is now censoring the words chest and take. Don't ask me why. From these two pieces of dirt, I can farm an infinite amount of dirt. This obviously wouldn't be super helpful in a regular world, but on Skyblock or any other map where your dirt supply is limited, this is super helpful. So you take your dirt, turn it into coarse dirt using two gravel, place down the coarse dirt, bring out your shovel and turn the coarse dirt into path blocks, and then mine those path blocks and you've doubled your dirt supply. You can do this endlessly and get however much dirt you want, and if you need gravel, you can get it from piglin trades. Random Minecraft facts. Coal blocks that you can make from 9 coal can smelt 8 times more items than 9 coal by themselves can. Axolotls can attack tadpoles, which is a pretty weird one. If you ever for some reason need lily pads, they can actually be obtained through fishing. A pretty interesting one that I didn't know about is how high you actually have to be up for endermen to not attack you. So endermen are three blocks tall, meaning that typically if you want to kill them without taking damage, you just make a ceiling that's three blocks from the floor and they won't hurt you. But you can actually place just one block in a slab and for some reason they cannot hit you. Another weird one is that hoglins are hostile towards armor stands. I don't know why hoglins are upset at armor stands, but yeah. When end cities were first added in 15w31a, a beacon with a speed effect would spawn inside the end ship. I'm glad this ultimately didn't remain as 
as a feature because then the wither would be pretty pointless to spawn. Minecraft is now banning skins. So Minecraft Snapshot 23W33A is now out on Java Edition and it has added the ability for players to now report Minecraft skins and usernames. If you do get reported and your skin is indeed inappropriate, then that skin will be banned and nobody will be able to use it ever again. A few people brought up the point that you can just change one pixel on the skin or change some colors around and the skin will basically be the same thing, so I guess we'll see what Mojang will do about that. But this snapshot also made it so mobs can attack you with the bottom of their hitbox, ravagers can't hit you through walls, and small mobs can't hit you on a horse. Minecraft, but it's raining wardens. Alright, so I'm not sure when the wardens... Okay, never mind. Here they go. They're starting to fall already. I'm just kind of try to run, I guess. Surely this guy can't hear me though, right? Oh my god, and there's one up there. Surely I'll be okay, right? Okay, all right. I wonder if I go this way. They'll hear that. I don't think they will, but I got two pieces of wood. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh my god, I'm trying so hard right now. I'm jumping on all these different leaves, going crazy. All right, I'm gonna go all the way down here in this water, which I know sounds insane, but I'm gonna place that crafting table, and then I'm gonna place this door, and bam, I can't see the... Okay, so I realized over this super loud noise that the the wardens actually just spawn a little bit above you so i have to listen to all of these wardens while i'm trying to dig for iron that is so annoying minecraft china edition is a version of minecraft similar to bedrock edition and java edition but china edition is only available for people who live in china with a chinese citizen id required to play the game there's a ton of stuff that is different from minecraft as we know it and china edition such as their apocalypse dimension that you enter from making this portal with a ton of new items new mobs new bosses like this cyclops boss this boss called chaos which is by far my favorite favorite, a fire shooting mage, and the final boss, which is a mermaid. These four bosses spawn in their own structures, and China Edition also has an RPG-like leveling up system. There's some new ores as well, and you can even transform into this weird-looking entity. There's very little gameplay or information about China Edition online, making it difficult for anyone who lives outside the region to find information about the game, so there's still very much that is unknown. This is a bed, and there's typically no reason to use beds other than a the overworld because in the nether and end they blow up when you try to sleep in them. But this effect can still be useful because for example you can go netherite mining with beds in order to clear out a larger space. But a far less known use is for travel. If you're in the end and don't have an elytra yet, most of the time you're using ender pearls or just bridging to each end platform with blocks. But with a bed and an ender pearl, if you throw the pearl over the bed then immediately blow up the bed, it shoots the pearl super far far in order for you to reach platforms that are really far out. This obviously works in the nether too, and it's fairly easy to use, and by far the quickest way to travel without an elytra. This is an actual mob in Minecraft. Well, Minecraft Earth. Which if you're like me, you're probably wondering what the hell is Minecraft Earth and why does Minecraft have like 20 different editions of their game? But Minecraft Earth is basically the Pokemon Go version of Minecraft where players were able to play Minecraft in the real world. This game was ultimately shut down, as Mojang says, due to outdoor restrictions during the COVID-19 pandemic. But Minecraft Earth brought us the Cluck Shroom and it was probably a great addition for the five people who played Minecraft Earth. So recently I've seen a ton of people building super hard to escape prison, so today, I wanted to take a shot at building a prison that is really hard to escape. Now, I could do 40 layers of obsidian, that would for sure be hard to escape, or I could do obsidian with a layer of lava, with a layer of obsidian, with a layer of lava. That would be hard too, but by far, the hardest prison to escape from is just trapping a player in bedrock. You can beat Minecraft on Adventure Mode. Adventure Mode is a game mode in Minecraft where you cannot break or place any block, so it makes the game very different. And unfortunately, it's not possible to beat Minecraft on a random seed without cheating, but on a set seed with the end portal lit, it's totally possible. I even did this myself, and because on set seeds you know the location of everything in the world, you can trade with villagers to get a bow and arrows, and then immediately go to the end stronghold and fight the dragon, beating the game without ever placing or destroying a block. One game mode that I've never been able to understand on Hyper 
pixel is skyblock so today i'm gonna try and understand how to play skyblock all right so here at the hub we have leo where we can progress through your we have the security slot that's his down we, we have the community center that is 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 and a new area discovered called the blacksmith with a bunch more NPCs and there's NPCs over here and over there and <sighs> Jesus. I'm going to show you the best farm in Minecraft. It's a farm that you can only build under Y level 62. It's a farm that uses mobs. It's a farm that has mobs that only spawn in light level 3 or below. That's right everyone, a bat farm. This is quite obviously the best farm of all time because it produces this sound. Any other farm is just pointless. I'm going to show you farms for all minerals in Minecraft. They're minerals. So there are eight minerals in Minecraft. No, I'm not counting netherite. And for coal, wither skeletons drop this item. Iron, you can get from iron golem farms, or even more rare, zombies can drop this too. Copper is an item you can get from drowned farms, and you can get a lot of this. Gold is fairly easy too. You can get a lot of this from a pigment farm that you build above the nether bedrock ceiling. Redstone you can get from witches, which I almost never see anyone build a witch farm, so I guess this isn't super useful. Lapis you can get from cleric villagers, and this emerald farm will help with those trades as you can get thousands of emeralds from raid farms. Now diamonds are the hardest by far, as no mob drops diamonds, but you can use these tunnel bores to quickly find diamonds. You can find them in buried treasure as well, or if you get a mending book, there really is no need for a bunch of diamonds, as your armor and tools can last forever with this enchantment. There is a new Minecraft speedrun world record of 1 minute and 4 seconds. Of course this is the set seed speedrun category as the random seed speedrun is much longer, but before I talk about the gameplay I want to talk about how this world record has the biggest sensory overload I've ever seen. Seriously I get a headache watching this. This person has a moving anime girl on the left, they got their timer on the top left, they got chat on the bottom left, they have subway surfers on the right side. And and finally, some GIFs on the bottom right, all around the main gameplay. This is TikTok attention span at its finest, but they spawn right on top of the end portal and have some geometry dash level precision. Of course, the portal is a 12i and they run to the left side of the end and use this really weird trick that I'm not sure how it works, but this trick allows the player to kill the dragon with only one arrow. But after this, they walk into the portal and GG, one minute, four seconds. So a little while ago, Notch put out this tweet, I'm not calling it an X, saying that Herobrine was one stubborn myth. And yes, obviously Herobrine was never real, but someone currently at Mojang actually kind of responded to this tweet, saying that back in the day, kids were obsessed with Herobrine and that they believe the warden has recaptured that. Hmm. Lil bro, I hate to break it to you, but Hero Brian just can't be touched. Don't compare the warden to this legend. But in all seriousness, a new mob vote is coming to the game soon, as well as Minecraft Live 2023. And dear God, do I hope we get a new dimension and the community votes for a useful mob. But uh, yeah, we probably won't get either. Minecraft, but we share damage. All right, we're in. Oh, Vivili, what's up, bro? Ah! Ah! Do you mind saving me? No, no, dude, dude. There you go, dude. man. Okay, thanks for losing my health, bro. You're so slow. That's my. I just took your way. crafting table, buddy. And that's my stone. I just took your stone. What are you gonna do about it? Hmm? Five diamonds to leave. What about five coal? All right, I'll accept it. <laughs> Would you like your crafting table back too? How do you steal my crafting table, bro? I got two of them. <laughs> Dude's the crafter man. Yeah. Oh. What the oh, heck? Dude, I, I oh my god. Twice, and you moved out of the way <laughs> twice. Bro, I haven't. No <laughs> need. You suck. You suck. I knew you suck so much. <laughs> I just looked at an Enderman, so this might be the death of us. Oh no. Oh, wow. 
I'm sorry, dude. One thing that I absolutely need Mojang to change right now is when I'm trying to repair an item, I need them to get rid of the text too expensive. I absolutely hate this feature. I think I should be the one who decides what's too expensive. Like if this repair costs 150 levels or even 20,000 levels, it would be way less infuriating than too expensive. I don't think this is even a matter of balancing the game because if something costs 20,000 levels and I can actually afford it, then I've definitely set up a crazy XP farm and I should be able to use that XP. So yeah, Mojang, just get rid of this. Nobody likes it. If you leave trees floating, you're a horrible person, possibly the worst person to ever live. I'm going to teach you all some unspoken Minecraft rules today, such as always place your furnace next to the crafting table. Placing it anywhere else is psychopath behavior. When looting a bastion or end city, always take the diamonds, tools, and armor from the chest even if you don't need them. Whenever you find diamonds in your world, mine them. Just kidding, that's insanity. Real Minecraft players always mine around the diamonds before collecting them. When you load up a survival world for the first time, always remember to search for a good base location for hours on end before ultimately settling down in just a regular forest. This is a great day, guys. A new troll just dropped. So if you're playing on a server with your friends and you want to do a peaceful troll, you know, one that doesn't involve blowing up their entire base, and losing your friends forever, I have something for you that will kill their eardrums. So basically, you can spawn a ton of lightning bolts every second if you're in a biome that's thundering. By putting a lightning rod on a repeating sticky piston and throwing multiple channeling tridents on it. Seriously, when I heard the noise this produced, even knowing that it was coming, I jumped because it's so loud and unexpected. <laughs> Minerals. Mineral. This player got gold, diamonds, emeralds, coal, iron, amethyst, lapis, copper, quartz, redstone, and netherite in one minute and eight seconds. So he spawns in the world and instantly goes for the buried treasure to get diamonds, emeralds, gold, and iron. With some of the gold, he makes a pressure play to blow up a tree for sticks to craft a pickaxe. Afterwards, he blows up more TNT and crafts his iron pickaxe and the TNT blows up some coal underneath. He falls in an area where there's amethyst, then falls down a ravine, to get lapis, redstone, and copper. Then proceeds to make another portal at the speed of light. In the nether, he gets quartz, then digs inside the bastion right next to him to get his last mineral, netherite. So sometimes I make videos on set seed speedruns, where players do a speedrun on a predetermined seed and know the location of every structure. And recently I got this comment. Ah, uh, the I know this seed already, so on, on the cheat with all I need, aromatically there cheat. Man, this better be in a separate category of cheating speedruns. What is this guy talking about? Set seed speedruns are a category that has a set of rules. That is not cheating. I'll show you what cheating looks like. All right, loaded up my world. I'm gonna switch to creative, build an end portal, kill the dragon. All right, guys, I now have the record, except I don't because I cheated and broke the rules by going in creative. This really small YouTuber recently made a video about how to easily take over the ocean monument, and I wanted to give my approach. Nah, but seriously, you can set your render distance to two chunks and mine the gold in the monument without ever gaining the mining fatigue status effect. If you bring some doors with you for air pockets and have this render distance trick in mind, it's super easy to kill all the elder guardians in the stronghold and get the gold. Minecraft 1.20.2 pre-release 1 is now out and it made a few changes with villagers. Before, cartographers only sold maps that lead to the ocean monument and woodland mansion, but now cartographers sell several seven new maps as well. These new maps point to a different village or structure, making it now possible to find every other village type by following the map. This will help as different types of villagers will now trade different items. Some structure loot has also changed, and some books now have a high chance of generating in some structures. The Mending book now has a high chance of spawning in ancient cities. Efficiency 5 books now have a high chance of spawning in mine shafts. Quick Charge 3 now has a high chance of spawning in pillager outposts. And Unbreaking 3 now has a high chance of spawning in desert and jungle temples.
Attention people! Alright, so if you haven't migrated your Minecraft account from Mojang to Microsoft by the 19th of September, then your account will be deleted. All you have to do is go to Minecraft.net, log in, and click on Move My Account. It's a super easy process, so if you haven't played Minecraft in a while, or if you know anyone who hasn't played Minecraft in a while, let them know, or on the 19th, their account will be deleted. Over the years, Minecraft has had a ton of bugs and exploits such as players finding ways to duplicate items and even collecting unobtainable items. But one major exploit that has been in Minecraft for years despite it being patched a few times is the ability to break bedrock and even go through it. This is in my opinion the best exploit in the entire game and one that most people don't even view as an exploit and more of a cool trick that you can do in the game. Some players have broken the bedrock in the overworld and found ways to build a base in the void and in the nether, this has changed the way Minecraft is played by making gold farms, hoglin farms, gas farms, and more all on the nether roof. Every Minecraft player should know these tricks. When you see this tall mob, look in its eyes and it will give you diamonds. In the nether, Frostwalker boots give you the ability to walk on lava. When looking at a cactus, press Q while holding a piece of armor to give it the thorns enchantment. When making a house out of wood, always place this in your house to create a cobblestone generator. When raiding an end city, you can hold the elytra in your hand to fly so that you can have a chest plate on, as well as the ability to fly. When coming across this structure, make sure to kill all the mobs there, then head to the closest village and the villagers will give you a reward. If you're playing hardcore, to get out of the end, all you have to do is jump in the void and it will place you back in your bed in the overworld. I decided to play Minecraft Online, Minecraft's oldest server that was created in 2000. 10. All right, I just spawned in and wait, what just happened? I can go to Portugal, I guess. Wait, is that the language? All right, now we're back here. This world is pretty crazy. So this server apparently doesn't have griefing, so you can't destroy anything. But I mean, look at this. This is crazy. This guy's got like a little chicken base up here. There's all that stuff down there. Oh my gosh, this guy has a hoe and I can take it. Wait, can I break his chest too? Oh, wow, he didn't claim his land. Oh, it says, please don't enter. Oh, sorry, man. What does he have down here? Oh, wow, even more stuff. Oh, we made it outside in the nether. Tree from alpha, do not break. This is the last standing alpha tree on the server. Okay, as funny as it would be to break this tree right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be respectful and not break it. All right, well, this was an interesting experience. Did this get removed? I found an old Minecraft book I had and it says this. Endermite, lead them to soul sand. They'll sink into it and suffocate. Okay, surely this isn't real, right? Oh, wow, it actually sunk in the ground. But yeah, it's not suffocating. That's one of the problems with the physical game guides for something like this. They become false very easily. Would you rather wither Storm or Hero Brian as in-game boss. Okay, call me crazy, but I feel like the Wither Storm would be a lot more fun to go against. I mean, Hero Brian is cool and nostalgic, but yeah, this to me just looks a lot more like a boss. What? the hell is this? Okay, so this ancient city generated below bedrock in this person's super flat world. I also wanted to show this girl made a huge bee just out of paper. There's no glue or tape involved at all, and I thought it was really cool. You can find caves with F3 in vanilla Minecraft, even if there are no mobs in the cave. I'm not talking about the entity count that players use to find fortresses and bastions in the nether. I'm talking about this C value. This value tracks the number of air blocks in your field of view, meaning that if you're underground and put your FOV and render distance low, you'll be able to find empty caves right next to you just from reading this value. Today is a big day because season 2 of my server is now live. We now added an anarchy server, so now we have an SMP server and an anarchy server. Anarchy is pretty much what you would expect it to be, no rules other than obviously don't lag out the entire server. And now our SMP has reset and players now have to start over. The SMP has shops, bounties, and economy 
ranks purchasable with in-game money, an auction house, MCMMO, which is one thing I'm super glad we got to add in season two. We also have the ability for players to do a coin flip now. So if you and another player bet 50K on heads and tails, whoever wins gets all. You also have your kills, deaths, money, and MCMMO on your screen at all times. So kills and deaths are trackable. And if you can't find players and want a duel, you can teleport to the arena and fight other players easily. This server has crossplay, so if you're playing on mobile, Bedrock Edition, Java Edition, anyone can join. The server address is vivily.net if you want to join, and I hope y'all have fun. This is what Minecraft with one inventory slot looks like. I gave myself the horrifying, downright awful, absolutely stupid challenge to try and beat Minecraft like this. This is actually an official snapshot from Minecraft called 22W13 one block at a time. In this snapshot, the way you craft is by throwing blocks into the air and drawing them on the ground with a crafting table. But this really isn't needed because your hand is silk touch, so anything you can mine just goes into your hand and is able to be placed. I literally spent 40 minutes destroying this ruined portal in order to make a functioning nether portal, so it was literal pain. The nether was pretty weird too because the chests found in the fortress actually contained end portal frames with the eye already filled in. So you have to throw these in the air and hope they land the correct way which is nearly impossible itself because these things go in all directions when you throw them. The full video of me doing this ridiculous challenge is on my channel so check it out. What is the best Minecraft server? Vividly.net. I'm joking, obviously this is subjective, but what makes a server good generally depends on how much you can do on a server and how engaging it is. Vivly.net has a player run economy, shops, bounties able to be set on players, coin flips for gambling, PvP, an auction house, an anarchy server on the side for people who like hacking, and one of the coolest things by far is MCMMO. MCMMO allows you to upgrade your mining, archery, axes, taming, alchemy, swords, herbalism, unarmed, and so many more abilities. So for example, for the mining ability, every time you mine blocks, you will gain mining XP, and if you mine ores, you can get even more XP. For swords, the more you use a sword, the more levels you gain with your sword ability, and the more damage you do with the sword, and so on for all the abilities. This is my favorite addition by far, and the amount of stuff to do is what makes this server enjoyable. But some people prefer Hypixel, and that's okay. Getting through the nether is easy, unless you're on better rock good luck with that but to beat minecraft you need blaze rods and ender pearls to get to the end and to easily get blaze rods and pearls press f3 lower your fov look around and look at this e value if the e value spikes up then if you move in the direction that value spikes in you will find another fortress or bastion also depending on your render distance you can figure out how far away the structures are at the bastion mine the gold and trade with the piglins to get pearls and yeah i don't need Need to tell you how to get rods f3 is goaded this is a furnace Bruh. and it's okay it does its job it smelts stuff but it's not great it's actually not even good with some very basic materials you can upgrade your furnace to a blast furnace to smell ores way faster or even upgrade it to a smoker that cooks food way faster this is a super easy thing to do to be more time efficient but i almost never see anyone with either of these they normally just make a furnace and live with that forever I even teleported to 10 random people on my server and everyone had just a furnace. So save some time, make a blast furnace or smoker. Sarcasm is dead. Maybe I shouldn't even be surprised by this, but in some of my videos there's always a little bit of sarcasm and I understand when I'm sarcastic there's no change in my tone of voice. I literally speak the exact same as I am now. But sometimes the sarcasm is so obvious that pretty much everyone should understand it. Especially in this video where I show a picture of a youtuber with over 7 million subscribers and call him a small youtuber i'll just roll the clip this really small youtuber recently made a video about yeah that's it it's just a couple seconds long and it's clearly a joke and i'm not even kidding almost every comment on that video is someone calling me an idiot to some capacity the top comment on this video even has 3,000 likes and says nah this really small youtuber has 7 mil more subs than you like Yes, thank you five-year-olds for explaining my joke. This is an exploding sheep that turns into many smaller sheep, and this is a player that has no idea what just happened, as you can see by the what the hell message. The best part of owning a server is having the ability to troll, so I used a few tools to troll the players. 
Oh my god! Oh my god, did you see that? I didn't know it launched them in the air! <laughs> you see him looking around? What the hell was that? He's putting torches down. He thought it was a creeper! <laughs> it doesn't affect players. He doesn't take any damage. <laughs> damage is different on Minecraft Bedrock and Java. So if you're a Minecraft enjoyer like myself and you play on Java, you probably make an axe to kill mobs and never use a sword until end game when you can put sharpness, fire aspect, etc. on your sword. But if you're on Bedrock, you should absolutely not do this and instead use a sword for killing mobs at all times. This is because, yet again, no idea why Minecraft makes things like this different between versions, but swords do more damage on Bedrock and axes do more damage on Java. Without critical hits, a Sharpness 5 Sword in Java does 11 damage, and on Bedrock it does 15.25. In Java, without crits, to kill this Enderman it took me 5 hits, but on Bedrock it took me 6 with an axe. Why is this a difference? This is the quickest way to get lots of XP in Minecraft from the start. Speed run the overworld and make a nether portal with a bucket, then in the nether look for a nether wastes biome and make something like this this with trap doors. Maybe on your way to the nether wastes you can find a skeleton and get their bow and while standing here shoot arrows at the pigmen to attract them to you and make them fall in here then go down the ladder to your killing chamber and smack their little feet. The pigmen will just keep respawning so in just a short amount of time you'll be level 30 and you'll get a lot of gold. I don't know what happened with Mojang but they've just become obsessed with the ducks. In Minecraft's recent YouTube video they talk about the 2023 mob vote and they mentioned ducks a few times. They changed Steve to have a duck beak on him. He's got this duck image next to him while he's talking, which he later changes into a duck detective. He puts a little duck head on. There's this graphic of a duck saying, my name is Janice. He calls the chickens ducks. Right, duckies? They're chickens. And the mob vote will be on October 13th, and judging by all this duck talk, I think I think the next mob vote will have the Moo Bloom. Crying Obsidian is a block that was first introduced in Beta 1.3 in 2011, and it looked like this. But in 2012, it was removed, and eight years later, in 2020, it was reintroduced with the texture we know today. Initially, Crying Obsidian was going to be created by either throwing normal obsidian through a portal, or normal obsidian being struck by lightning, which I really like this idea. But they chose it to be given through piglin trading. When Crying Obsidian was first introduced, introduced in 2011, it was actually meant to be the block that sets your spawn point, but of course they ended up going with beds. Hopefully they add more uses for crying obsidian later, because I have no idea who actually uses a respawn anchor other than crystal PvPers. Who is the worst Minecraft speedrunner of all time? There's this homeless man who's been desperately trying to beat XQC's speedrun record of 1638 for the last four months, and streaming it for around five to six hours per day. He's mastered the art of throwing, dying countless times when he could have easily beat the record. Like this time when he fell in lava. Or this time when he had a fortress right next to a bastion and opened his inventory. Or this time when he for some reason built up just to mine directly into lava. Or this legendary speedrun strat where he makes a crafting table and sticks and tries to make a suspicious stew shovel. Or this other time with a fortress literally inside a bastion and he gets shot by a skeleton and falls off. Or when he tried to kill the dragon with the respawn anchor and placed the glowstone in the wrong place. Or this time when he just walks inside the piglins. Looks like it doesn't get any worse than this. Hardcore YouTubers be like. Hey guys, welcome to my hardcore series. We're going to keep it pretty simple for this episode. I don't want to go too crazy. So let's just get some wood, get some tools, build a starter house, go mining, get full iron armor, find some diamonds, make a wheat farm, go to the nether, get some blaze rods, get some pearls. 
pearls, make some eyes, go back to the overworld, find more diamonds, get full diamond armor, get a cow farm, get a sugarcane farm, make a level 30 enchantment table, upgrade the house, look for the end portal, find the stronghold, go through the portal, kill the dragon, go to the outer islands, find an end city, get an elytra, have a little bit of fun flying around, make a creeper farm, get infinite rockets, go back to the nether, mine some debris, more debris, and some more debris, craft some netherite ingots, get full netherite armor, mine even more debris, kill some wither skeletons, spawn the wither, get the star, make a beacon, mine more netherite, and make a full netherite beacon. Pretty good progress for episode one. Let's see what people are up to on my server. So this guy has a wither skeleton farm in the end, which is pretty crazy, and then over here he's got the enderman farm, and this is a pretty crazy wither skeleton farm because over here he's got a sorting system. So all the drops that the wither skeletons drop ultimately gets put in here and then he can easily sell the heads. Yeah, there's some heads right here for money. Yeah, I have no idea why this player needs so many campfires. Looks like this guy's trying to cure a zombie villager. God damn it, every time I move somewhere, this guy moves right in front of me. This guy has a massive head wall of all the players on the server he's killed. That's pretty sick. And these guys are set, man. They have a big Enderman farm getting a lot of pearls that they can sell in the shop for a ton of money. And they just have a pretty sick end base in general with a giant frog. And this player... Well, this player just seems kind of lost in the ocean with no boat. I hope you're okay. There are a lot of weird Minecraft speedruns like the Obsidian Cock speedrun I talked about a while ago or this Enter EDN speedrun that the goal of it is to enter the end. Yeah, I have no idea why it's EDN and not end, but this 21 hour world record speedrun is a run that pretty much nobody wants to do. There's literally only one person who's actually done this, so if you can beat this then hey, you're the new world record holder. But this speedrun is for the fastest time to beat minecraft on every single version of the game yeah that's right this guy speed ran every single version of minecraft in 21 hours this guy may hold the world record forever because i have no idea how easy it would be to beat this but i don't know who would even put themselves through this yes i'm copying this video idea from camman 18 okay guys i made this super difficult i'm not even kidding most of you probably won't even notice but you may think you're watching normal Minecraft gameplay right now, but you're not. There's something in the video that's not normally in the game. There's something off. And it's not about how I'm playing, by the way. I've done one of these videos like three months ago, and a lot of you were saying in the comments that using a spyglass was what's wrong with the video. Like, yes, I do understand that the spyglass is a horrible item, but it's something that's in the game, you know? Like, it's not wrong. But I'll just spell it out here there's a block that just shouldn't be where it is it makes absolutely no sense to be in the location that it's in and yeah that's pretty much it i'll leave you to the rest of the video Did you see it? Okay, so yesterday I made a video where I played Minecraft and I let you guys guess what was wrong about that video. I had a great time reading the comments because very few people got it right and some people thought things were wrong that were just things that are normally in the game. Like at the end here, a ton of people thought this parrot was a lantern. This comment actually would have been right if I played on Bedrock, but on Java, when you craft items, they go to the right side of your inventory. This other comment points pointed out that there was a melon under a tree, and yes, this is legit too. What was actually wrong with this video was at the very start, there was one single jungle leaf inside of the oak tree. And yes, oak trees spawn inside jungle biomes, I saw comments about this too. But this kind of made me upset how people actually saw this, so here's a more difficult one. If you saw that one, then hey, you have crazy game knowledge and you may need to take a trip outside so the first mob vote is here and it's a crab of course it seems like the three mobs already leaked because minecraft put the videos in a playlist already but tomorrow and the next day the next two mobs will be revealed and the crab actually seems like a pretty decent mob crab one of the new mobs that wants to join minecraft it lives in mangrove swamps like this one the crab's claw is very handy for players that like building <laughs> 
Yes, uh, because trap claws allow players to place blocks further away. This is awesome. Okay, that pun was really cringe. But hey, at least this mob has a use, unlike a few i know the minecraft dev team is just lazy there's no other way to say it i don't know if they even have a list of things to do for the day because it seems like they barely do anything i saw something yesterday that really blew my mind and just highlighted how stupid a mob vote is this guy literally like 16 hours after mojang announced the crab will be in a mob vote literally made a crab mod it looks fine and he even made the claw reach mechanic like one person did this in 16 hours probably less than that because he's not going to work on it non-stop and we now have the armadillo vote 2 which has the ability for you to craft armor for your wolf which is just a cool feature too like they're just f lazy i don't know why they don't just add every mob this shouldn't be that hard for a whole studio seriously take every single mob vote and add every one of them this really irritates me how they don't do this there are some very unique minecraft speedruns like this stack of lime wool speedrun or this high percent speedrun where the player has to get to y level 420 in the fastest time or this obsidian speedrun where the player has to make an obsidian p in the fastest just time. Even this Sonic Tails and Knuckles speedrun is weird where you have to dye sheep orange, blue, and red in the fastest time possible. There's even a speedrun for getting a full inventory which is just crazy to watch how precise the movement is. There's a lot more weird speedruns and I showed how the record for each of these was done and I even tried a few myself in this video on the channel so check out the full video. I'm kind of torn. All three of the mobs in this mob vote bring very minor quality of life and improvements to the game, but I think they're all cool. Like the crab allows you to place blocks further, but of course we already have scaffolding, and to be honest, how hard is it to just build up a little bit in order to reach where you want? The armadillo allows us to put armor on the wolves, but I honestly never use a wolf, even though this feature is cool. And penguins allow boats to go faster some way. I don't know if the mob itself pushes you or what, I feel like that's kind of important to know. I feel like the armadillo with the information we have now is probably the best choice in terms of what it adds to the game but hopefully they add the other two mobs in a future update this is my monster 4070 ti pc and i'm gonna blow it up with minecraft but not like this like this but this still didn't kill it so now we add a shader but it's still alive so now we add a resource pack and the game is the most beautiful i've ever seen it but my fps is still fine so this is an ultra realistic resource pack that's behind a paywall and well i bought it yep this is an ultra realistic cow and a pig and a chicken and a sheep getting their with a giant yeah to see how far i took this check out the full video on the channel the minecraft community is based i've been annoyed with the minecraft community for a while for constantly picking stupid mobs to win the vote like the sniffer the glow squid thank you dream the la and the phantom but people are making like political propaganda type posters for ending the mob vote this one is pretty funny all or none not just one i want you to stop the mob votes every player must fight with all the mobs in the poster why settle for less when we could have it all never forget what they took from you dear mojang shut the f up we are tired of your bull support the modders boycott the vote and this petition is awesome too stop the mob vote with nearly 300 000 signatures sometimes i see people saying mojang is doing everything they can and they're working hard and people like me shouldn't call them lazy but i'm tired of them doing the same thing for years and i see single people make working mobs in less than 20 24 hours but i'm proud of the community man keep it up i'm so shocked because i hid something in a video i made about a week ago that was so minute and well i literally said if you saw that one then hey you have crazy game knowledge and you may need to take a trip outside and yeah of course one single person found it this is actually really impressive because there were over 2,000 comments on the video and to find this you would have to have such a crazy amount of 
game knowledge to find this one thing that's off. I'm actually really upset by this because I wanted to hide something that nobody would be able to find, but for like one second of the video, you could see a blue orchid in the corner of the mountain. Of course, blue orchids aren't supposed to spawn in this biome, they're only found in swamps and flower forests, but how did this person even notice that? I mean, this is such a minute thing to know about which flower spawns in which biome, like, what? Congrats, man. <laughs> wow. I made a huge mistake. So yesterday I was trying to record a video about a horror mod pack I made. The mods included From the Fog, which puts Hero Brian in your world to spook and terrorize you. Man from the Fog, which basically adds this guy that's similar to the cave dweller, but above ground. Weeping Angels, which adds these statues that only move when you don't look at them, but freeze in place when you do look at them. Eyes in the Darkness that add these really creepy eyes and, well, the darkness. Horror Elements that add these cool structures and dead bodies around the world, and finally, a physics mod to kick the bodies around when you kill a mob. If there's anything else I should add, please let me know. I want this pack to be really terrifying. But anyway, I recorded this video for an entire two hours, and there were a ton of scares, and I had a really good time, but I didn't test my audio beforehand, and for some reason, my gain was super high, and well, this is what the video sounded like. The first order of business is to find today's first Friday the 13th, so I'm gonna scare people on my server with TNT. As everyone knows, this is the most terrifying thing to experience on Friday the 13th. Oh my god, that guy went flying. I think Bedrock players are the most fun to mess with. This guy's actually getting harassed by the skeleton right now. Uh... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, let's troll this guy. This guy has diamond armor. Oh! What the hell happened to him? Yeah, let's teleport to him again. What? He went offline when he flew in the air. He he literally logged off. He got so scared. Oh my god. It sends them flying. Wait. There's drowned here. This guy's literally gonna die. Uh, never mind. I guess drowned are too stupid to get out of the water and fight this AFK guy. This is the greatest form of Minecraft torture. Torture that doesn't actually kill people, but just kind of spooks them. This strong, thick, heavy, and shadly person killed the warden in less than a minute after loading into the world. He did this by spawning in a seed that starts the player inside an ancient city. He mines some of the wood, makes some trap doors, and takes this water up to break some dripstone. He uses the dripstone to lure the warden with the sound of it breaking, then spams dripstone on the warden to slowly damage it one by one. After a few seconds, the warden is dead. You can see more weird speedruns in this 20 minute long video I made about them. I tried playing the web browser version of Minecraft. Oh look, I can invite 9 friends to join. Well, I don't have any friends. Pick a username. Okay. Alright, this is the classic version of Minecraft. Apparently this is like the first iteration of it. But you can't run... What if you press F5? What if I see... Oh, reload the site. Oh, well, I don't want to do that. Wow, this is the build height. Look at this crazy build height. Oh, there's no inventory, there's nothing. Uh, these blocks down here are all I have to work with. Wait, there's caves. Wait, they have coal. What? How weird is that to have coal? when there's no use for it. They have caves here. That's actually really interesting. I didn't think they would have caves. Oh wow, that's kind of cool too. Every time you break a block that's near water, that block just turns into a water source. I mean, you could theoretically, oh my God, just make this entire cave water. Oh my God. Well, this was an interesting experience to say the least. I can't believe I'm saying this, but the next Minecraft update doesn't look bad. I mean, it's not anything massive as per usual, but I think the stuff it adds are actually good and fun. First off, it adds the auto crafter, which now makes it able for players to create farms to automatically craft items forever changing Minecraft. And a feature I really like, the trial chambers, which is a structure randomly generated underground that has new decorative blocks and spawners that spawn waves of mobs based on the number of players fighting in the chamber. When you defeat the mobs you get rewards and apparently one of the rewards are diamonds so I wonder if people will be able to make diamond farms with this somehow. But there's also a new breeze mob that attacks with wind powers that transform the room you're fighting in, whatever that means. And it looks like the trial chamber was the background for the 2021 mob vote, so copper golem please? One of the devs also said that this is just the beginning and they'll reveal more leading up to the release of the update.
Get rolled, nerds. The armadillo won. In all seriousness, though, I did want the armadillo to win the vote because, well, boats are fast enough. I don't think they need to change. For the crab, we already have scaffolding to help us build, and if something is high up, you can just <laughs> build below you in order to reach it. I don't think it's that hard. And pet armor isn't anything major either, but I feel like if any of these three actually need a buff, it would be pets. But of course, hopefully Mojang is trolling and we'll get all three mobs in the game at some point surely surely right minecraft but there's no cubes well this is probably the weirdest thing i've ever seen so how do i oh i can just walk up it oh my god this is curse yeah this is not right this is not right at all what the heck am i looking at Oh my god, look at this tiny little hole. You know, I'm a curious guy. I'm gonna cheat. I want to look at some stuff. So this is what mountains look like now. That is weird. But what does the nether look like? Oh wow, this is... Oh my god, look at this tiny little thing here that you can walk on. Jesus. Wow, I went to the end to see what the end looks like. And this little thing is so narrow, I can't even get up it. I can't even get up it. I have to break these two in order to get out. So that makes me wonder then... What would the void look like, or the, the portal when the ender dragon dies? And the grand reveal? Well, it's not really anything special, is it? Raiding mob death sounds. No, I'm not a psychopath. So first things first, let's start with the cow. Eh, you know, nothing crazy. I'd give it like a three. Now let's try the panda. Eh, slightly cooler, you know, there's a little variation in the way it dies. Eh, I'd give it like a 5. What about a creeper? It sounds like water being evaporated on a stove. Kinda cool, nothing crazy, I'd give it a 5 as well. Now what about the bat? You know, I really like that one. I actually really like that one. That's a satisfying sound, I'd give that a 7. That's probably an eight not that's not bad what i'm really curious about is the ender dragon i'm giving this a zero it ruined my entire world i added hero brian and a few other horror mods to my minecraft world why troll me huh oh god oh my god have y'all seen hero brian so far in this video when i have oh my god oh my god that music. God dang it. I'm gonna... Oh, my house! Oh, f*** me! It's f***ing moving. Dude. Son of a... No, get the hell away from me. Oh, what have I done? Whoa, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? No, 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 everyone get the hell away from me, what the hell is that and that and that, what the hell is that, oh my god, there was Hero Brian right there. If you want to, you can check out the full 85 minute long video here on the channel. These are the Far Lands, a glitch in a super old version of Minecraft that happened when you went millions of blocks away from spawn and was fixed 12 years ago. Traveling this many blocks takes over a month of gameplay and, of course, player speed run this. This is by far the longest longest speedrun in Minecraft history with the world record holder Cabrani taking 1 month, 8 days, 13 hours, 52 minutes, and 15 seconds to do this. Of course this is gameplay time and it doesn't account for not playing, so if you have a game on your Steam profile with roughly 900 hours, that's the equivalent to how long it takes to beat this Minecraft record. Minecraft, but if I touch grass I have to go on my server and kiss the first person I see. Aw oh man, hopefully, you know, I don't spawn on grass so I can play for three hours long and edit this into a 60 second video. That would be fun. Oh my god, I actually spawned on leaves. Are you kidding me? All right, I gotta be really careful. I also just realized I'm in creative. Oh no, I just jumped on grass. Oh my god, video failed. That's crazy. And what about this guy? I'll give him a kiss. All right, now I'll throw TNT on him. Make him go flying in the air. You know, that's really unfortunate that I couldn't sit in that Minecraft world for hours on end uh, to just edit it into a 60 second video, man. That's a, that's a real shame that I touched grass so early. This crazy guy, Xylanox, got the 1.15 Minecraft speedrun world record with the time of 13 minutes and 42 seconds. Normally when people speedrun Minecraft, they do so in 1.16 because 1.16 added the nether biomes and piglins, making it easier to get ender pearls. In which 
which this guy also has the 1.16 record, so drugs may be in play here. But Xylanox took the training wheels off, and in 1.15 to get Ender Pearls quickly, you have to trade with an expert level cleric villager, and that's exactly what he did. Other than this change, there isn't much difference between the 1.16 and 1.15 run. You go to the nether to get rods, make eyes, go to the stronghold, and kill the dragon. GG. I played Bed Wars on drugs. Not literally, the game just looks crazy. This poor little brain receptors probably didn't even understand what just happened there. Get rolled, three-year-old. Well, on my screen, this doesn't look like I'm helping the bed defense at all. I'm sure for my teammate, this looks this looks like I'm doing a fantastic job. I love how I'm so used to this now that it's not even like weird looking to me. <laughs> I can imagine somebody like joining the stream right now <laughs> and then just like having an aneurysm and dying because it's like crazy looking. Yeah, get him! Give him a big kiss! Get it, get it, good buddy, get it, buddy. Get it, get it, I'll, I'll protect you. No matter what. Oh no, we're dead. We actually lost. Dang, that sucks. We lost. Oh my god, we lost. We lost. Wait. <gasps> Woo! I opened my comments and found some two-year-olds with zero IQ, and I thought it was really funny, so that's what today's video is. Anyone else notice his last few videos have been the same as Kemet and 18's videos, lol, usually day after Kemet and 18's. I know it's a school night, and this child is probably drooling on the iPad, but let's take a look at this. I make video about 925-hour Minecraft speedrun. Kemet and 18 make video about Portal Mod. I make video about scary Minecraft mods. Kemet and 18 make video about Secret Far Lands. I make video about raiding mob death sounds come man make video about walking one block for every subscriber he gets so this confirmed to me that people just like chatting come in 18 wannabe on a video of me on the oldest minecraft server believe it or not guys i know this is crazy for the milk chugging diaper shitting audience but two people can have the same idea especially when the idea is in no way creative at all i guess the lesson here is to a not say someone is copying someone when there is literally not even a little bit of proof and b if someone is copying who cares uh, Ah oh man, a new snapshot is here, featuring this ugly block, and this ugly block, and this ugly block. But just when you thought they were done, woo, we get another ugly block. And copper doors. Obviously this is subjective, I'm just trolling. I'm just not a fan of the way copper looks. The tough blocks are kinda cooler in my opinion. Oh yeah, they also updated the bat model. It's kinda cool, I mess with it. I think it's also pretty funny how the most useless mob of all time gets an update. I'm honestly just waiting for the snapshot with dog armor and the trials. I think those will be pretty fun to explore. I attempted to beat Minecraft with the no cubes mod, which makes the game not look like Minecraft at all, the moving textures resource pack, which makes every texture move, and the acid shaders, which makes the world bend around me. Chat, I'm gonna be sick. Woo! Now we're playing Minecraft, man. This is what it's all about. Oh my god, everything moves, even everything in our inventory, Jesus Christ. Oh man, this is... this... <laughs> This is crazier than I thought it was gonna be. Oh my god. Okay, this is so Oh my god, look at the cave. Oh my god. Oh wow, we can we can see that redstone down there, the glow squid. <laughs> if we just move the camera, what the heck? We're gonna put the water like down there. And then we're gonna do Oh my god! Doesn't that kind of look like a fortress? That is. That is a fortress, is it not? Dumb baby. Jesus. Is... Hey! Hey, I will murder you. These were only clips from the video. If you want to watch the full thing, you can here. Today is Halloween. Do you want to scare your friends in Minecraft this Halloween? Just follow these simple steps. Go to your friend's door. This is preferably done if the door already has a pressure plate in front of it, but you can also put a pressure plate behind the door to trick your friend. But you want to clear a massive area under your friend's house and begin placing a ton of TNT under their house. Now, when your friend goes into their house, their entire f house will blow up and they will lose everything they worked hard for. <laughs> Isn't that an epic Halloween scare? Make sure to subscribe for more epic scares. So I like the copper golem and tough golem mobs and wish they were added in the game in 1.21, but Mojang confirmed already that neither of those mobs will be added in this update. 
But what about the next? Not in 1.21, but 1.21.1. I'm definitely inhaling copium here, and I know that these mobs don't do anything mind-blowing or crazy, but I think the concept of cute little golems walking around your base is awesome. But the reason I bring this up is because Mojang has done something similar before in 1.16. In 1.16, Minecraft added all the nether biomes along with the bastion that introduced piglins, but no piglin brutes. Piglin brutes were added in the very next update, 1.16.1. This is my coping mechanism that the tough and copper golems will be added in 1.21, and it seems like it'd be a wasted opportunity if they weren't added, considering the trial chambers are made of variants of copper and tough. All right, so we have a new Minecraft snapshot, and we got possibly the best change ever. They updated the textures that were in the previous snapshot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's right, my friends. The textures that were in the previous snapshot got updated. And, uh, yeah, that's cool. They decided to drop a snapshot, and they were like, actually, hold on. We don't we don't like the textures in the snapshot. We'll, we'll, we'll have the next snapshot be the updated ones. But you know what? I like them. So, uh... That's cool. Thank you guys. But check this out. This is the new Minecraft cape. You will get this if you haven't gotten it already, if you voted at all for the mob vote. I actually didn't vote, so I uh, won't get this cape. But that's okay, because the cape I have on matches my skin already. So in the new Minecraft update, we now have the ability to freeze time, so everything just won't move even if i hit this villager he'll just stay in that i guess frame but because of this we can do some pretty crazy stuff like put a bunch of lava down put a bunch of lightning bolts right on top of this villager's position and then when we unfreeze the world yeah but actually that villager is now immortal actually because it turned into a witch and drank a fire res potion. For, I had no idea that villagers turned into witches. What the hell? And yeah, this looks pretty crazy. So then when we unfreeze the world, that is insane. But it makes for some pretty crazy effects. <laughs> I just thought this was really funny. So a while ago, I made a Where's Waldo type video where something in the video was wrong, and I wanted to see if anyone in the comments could figure it out. What was wrong was that for like two seconds of the video, there was a blue orchid in the corner on the mountain, barely visible. This is wrong because blue orchids don't spawn in this biome, but only one person out of about 3,000 comments actually found it. I then made a video about how this one person found it, and magically when I I made that video about a hundred people have found it and commented on the original video blue orchid i think i might be wrong you watched the reveal didn't you for those that didn't watch the answer video it was the blue orchid on the mountain no it wasn't why is there a blue orchid in the distance i appreciate this one because this guy at least pretended like he didn't know the answer blue orchidine um so close man yeah guys this is minecraft oh my god even the wool even the drops are just circles wait and they move when you look around that is interesting i have however found an issue because all of the blocks are like invisible so it's impossible to tell which is which yeah now this is definitely the most insane thing i have ever seen in this game oh my god look at this water what is going on right now uh goodbye creeper and zombie i'm gonna go all the way down here and i'm gonna make this crazy jump god dang it this could kind of be considered cheating if you think about it because i can look down there and i see copper just sitting sitting right there if i zoom in with optifine hey buddy why don't you go in this little pit with your brother the greatest Minecraft invention to ever exist. We don't need Albert Einstein, for I have created the dirt pe- This is the craziest village I've ever randomly come across. This is crazy because I built this entire roller coaster here for a video I made the other day and didn't even realize how crazy it was until some comments pointed it out. How did I not notice this? So as you can see, this entire village is in a swamp biome, but this 
doesn't happen. Villages don't spawn in swamps. The reason this village is here is because of this tiny little plains biome. I have no idea what this tiny biome is doing here, but it just so happens that a village spawned in this tiny area, so it kind of makes it look like this is a swamp village. But this is the seed, and these are the coordinates if you want to check it out yourself. What everyone has been waiting for, my top three Minecraft updates. Woo! In no particular order, please don't kill me. Cave update. This is pretty obvious to me as caves before were incredibly small and boring, but now caves are so massive you can fly through some of them with ease, which is really cool. And since mining is a huge part of the game, this is something everyone experiences. Unpopular opinion, but the villager update. Villagers are such a huge part of the game and they help you get super OP enchantments for your armor and weapons. And finally, number three, not the end update, the nether update. This update update is really underrated because before the nether was so barren and boring but now there's so much variety and you can now technically live inside the nether there's food wood tools and armor from bastions and the piglins changed the speedrunning game oh there's a key this will take us to the skulk dimension Probably not, actually. So this key is a new drop in the newest snapshot, and it comes from the trial spawners, but they don't have a use yet. Hmm. So we'll find out what that's for later. But this is the new Breeze mob, and it deals almost no damage, but the knockback is pretty nuts. So if you're in the trial chamber trying to kill the mobs, this guy is incredibly annoying. But this is a nice snapshot. There's also a lot of variety as to which type of mob can spawn in these. Minecraft isn't super difficult to beat, but what if you tried to beat Minecraft with no tools? It actually isn't as crazy as it sounds, unfortunately, but I want you to watch my full video about beating Minecraft with no tools so oh my god guys it was insane absolutely incredibly difficult challenge nobody in the world has ever done this before my god this is crazier than the 3 a.m challenge just look at this i had to kill enderman for 40 minutes just to get 14 pearls and this was a crazy situation to be in yeah just watch the full video so i'm sure y'all know about the dream boat clutch right well i'm gonna attempt to do that dang Dang. Wow, this is almost impossible. Bro, what? Okay, I understand what people say when they think it's scripted now. That is ridiculous. I refuse to believe you can just do this on a whim. Alright, last try. Alright, I'll craft my boat. Uh, I think I'll... Ah, no, I won't craft a bucket. I was thinking maybe I could craft a bucket, but no, I'll just do a boat. Alright, nah, I guess that wasn't that hard, actually. Alright, let's check this video out. Minecraft, but you control a black hole. Okay. That means you like, the black hole follows me faster. And whenever you subscribe, the black hole grows faster. Oh no, right, then we wait, better not like or subscribe the likes. video then. Uh oh Subscribes are deadly. It's almost as big as your mom. No, the oh wow that was an epic sucked. your mom joke Wait, did the black hole break bedrock? no guys stop subscribing does the black hole follow me into the oh wow look at that he made it to the nether and he doesn't even have any xp so I have enough wow look he has 13 ender eyes and a stack of beacons and no xp that's crazy he is so talented at this game okay let's go Woo, let's me? go is... wait no no oh no Oh my god, he made it to the back rooms! Ah! Farms for the brand new trial keys, which have no current use, have already been made. Basically, how this farm works is the entire area around the trial spawner floor is replaced with netherrack and lit on fire to kill any mob that spawns, and when all the mobs die, loot is produced from the trial spawner. Of course, there's more loot than just the trial key, but the trial key is the only item that is unique to the trial chambers, so that's really the only reason reason you'd build one of these since the spawners only activate every 30 minutes diamond spawn from the trial spawners too but honestly i think it may be faster to just mine diamonds than wait for one to spawn every 30 minutes but if you want a more technical analysis rayworks has a pretty good video about it wither ender dragon warden which is the hardest boss in minecraft all right let's try the wither That was pretty easy. Now for the Ender Dragon, the final boss of the entire game. Now, 
Best for last, let's try the ward. The old Herobrine world seed has been found along with how someone even made this image in the first place. This is a video I recently found and it's not from the original creator who made the Herobrine image, but I still think it's a cool concept. So basically the door is reskinned to look exactly like Herobrine and when standing in this spot, this looks almost exactly like the original image, minus the chicken. But this is on version Java Alpha 1.0. 0.16 underscore 02 and these are the coordinates of where this image was originally taken if you want to check it out yourself also check out my video where i added here by the minecraft this is a parasite this creature starts off as a baby and grows into this and its main goal is to go inside the body of other mobs infect them and transform them into a killing machine this is what an infected enderman looks like an infected pig an infected villager an infected ender dragon and even other more advanced types of parasites. Some of these creatures can even break through blocks to reach you, and I tried surviving in this city for as long as I could while my world was infected with parasites, and it was terrifying. You can check the full video out here on the channel. This guy with 1.5 million subscribers absolutely destroyed me. This is the saddest day ever. Vivali out here putting the least amount of effort into content. Sniper Wolf, a creator. This made me contemplate life. Maybe my content such as Minecraft but I kiss people, trolling small children on my Minecraft server, and even blow up your friend's eardrums tutorial was simply just lazy. So then I made a decision. I needed to figure out what high quality, high effort content looked like. So I decided to go on this guy's YouTube channel and I actually found something better. These animated short videos such as Oxy goes to war against the skibbity toilets, trick or treat as Minecraft YouTubers and these thumbnails with Minecraft characters with the fattest are so much better. So I did what any logical person would do after reading that comment. I instantly made this video because he's not wrong. My content isn't very high effort. I paid money for this ultra realistic resource pack. So I'm going to get my money's worth and show you all some stuff. Oh my God. Yes. By the way, I know I have a NASA computer. So this is actually a super realistic look looking house in this village. This swamp looks so beautiful. Here's a full set of netherite armor with a netherite sword. I think that looks pretty creepy actually. <laughs> and this is what a sheep looks like. It walks pretty realistic too, I guess. A villager looks the exact same though. Oh wow. The wither skeleton that's pretty terrifying. In the end, you know, nothing too crazy. The Endermen are absolutely terrifying though. And then yeah, the dragon. Unfortunately, the dragon looks the exact same. And I honestly can't get over how good these leaves look. They look so good. And then, yeah, this is what a cow looks like. I guess there's multiple variants of the cow. But that's pretty much all I can fit in a 60 second video. I did make a longer video about this though. My server now has mini games. My server is mainly an SMP server, but we added a few mini games just for extra stuff for people to do on the server. So we have Sumo Event and App Wars. Sumo Event is seemingly the more popular game mode, so let's talk about that. It's a mini game where the goal is to be the last player alive. Sounds pretty simple, but if a player kills you with the items they get from the chests around the map, or if a player knocks you into the water below, you're eliminated. The chest can have special items like this magic carpet that spawns a platform under you for a brief moment, an ice bridge that literally forms an ice bridge in front of you, a sponge to let you get away if needed. Each time you get a kill or win a game, you get a certain amount of XP, which contributes to your level. XP is also multiplied when you have a win streak, so the higher the win streak, the more XP you get. Also, when you win a game with three or more people, you get a token, and tokens can be used to buy perks that do different things to help you. So if you want to check out the mini games or the SMP, you can connect with Vivoli.net. Mojang has been teasing the release of the bundle for several years now, and I actually just realized a little while ago that this item is pretty stupid and i totally understand why they haven't added it in minecraft yet so get this the bundle can hold 64 items so like if i have a stack of cobble i can put it in a bundle but i mean this literally takes up the exact same amount of space as just 64 cobble wood anyway but i could put like three dirt 10 gravel 16 cobblestone and 35 oak logs in here and i guess that would be cool but like this isn't something i think anyone needs the crafting recipe for the bundle is string and 
rabbit hide, and rabbit hide isn't really anything that's plentiful, so the bundle doesn't strike me as an early game item. I honestly feel like if this got released, almost nobody would use this, because with chests, ender chests, and especially shulker boxes, nobody has inventory issues anymore. This is Five Nights at Freddy's in Minecraft. What you're watching is a complete recreation of the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, done with no mods and no data packs. This is simply just a texture pack in a map. Which is pretty crazy, because the map works exactly how the actual game does. There's two doors, a light you can turn on, a camera you can access with all areas of the pizza plex being visible. The animatronics move to your door, the phone guy audio is ripped straight from the game as well as literally every other audio, and it's pretty cool. I tried to survive through all five nights, and you can check out the full video here on the channel. <laughs> Oh my god! Minecraft is a huge game with a ton of little tricks and ways to mess with people online, and I've seen a ton of different ways to mess with people. So here's three of my favorite ones that are just hilarious. The first one is to get a bunch of channeling tridents and throw them on a lightning rod connected to a sticky piston connected to a redstone clock. I understand this is more of an end game type of gimmick, but I still think it's hilarious. If you're in a biome that's raining, this spawns a ton of lightning bolts every second and makes a horrible noise. My other favorite gimmick is spamming XP bottles on redstone ore and creating a ton of redstone particles that if nearby players have particle effects turned on, it will lag out their game. Finally, if you get some pufferfish in a water source under carpet, pufferfish can actually damage the player on the carpet above, making for a funny hidden trap. I've done a lot of things in Minecraft and made a lot of videos and sometimes when I cut out a part of the video, I get accused of cheating cheating, so today I want to go over some basic Minecraft mechanics. So hunger. If you move throughout the world, you lose hunger. If you sprint, you lose hunger at a faster rate. And if you sprint jump continuously, you lose hunger at an even faster rate. But you only lose hunger if your character is moving. So if you stand in place and mine under you, you can go from surface to bedrock without losing any hunger, as well as if you're in a boat, no matter how long the boat moves while you're in it. As long as your character doesn't move, you won't lose hunger. This even applies to riding in minecarts. I tried playing RL Craft on stream and oh my god, this is the most annoying mod of all time. So this mod pack makes the game harder by making every task miserable. So to just get wood, you have to destroy some gravel to get flint and by walking over the flint, you can't even pick it up. So you either have to right click the pieces on the ground individually or hold shift to pick them up. After getting the flint, you have to right click the flint on stone to get flint shards. After getting the flint shards, you then need a stick, and in order to get sticks, you have to destroy leaves and hope you get lucky. If you get unlucky, sometimes when you break leaves, a random OP mob will spawn from the leaves and just kill you, but if you do get lucky, you'll get sticks, and then you can make a flint knife. With the flint knife, you then cut weeds and get plant fiber, and with three plant fiber, you can make plant string. Crafting the string, flint, and stick like this gets you a hatchet, and with the hatchet, you can finally cut down a tree and get wood. Wow. This is actually a pretty cool raid farm that these guys have built. So this is what some of the most geared up players on my server are doing. Let's see what some noobs are up to. Okay, okay, this guy's got... <laughs> This guy's got a little chicken factory here. I don't know why he has so many holes just for chickens, but hey, nice. Oh, this player just bought a chicken spawner from the shop. I wonder if he knows that chickens will only spawn on grass. This guy has the most confusing base I have ever seen. I'm not even lying. So that's his mine down there. And then this is his base. But then if you go down this water somewhere, you get to a sugarcane farm. And then if you go down this water, you get to where his skeleton spawner is. Wow, that is that is a labyrinth, I'll tell you what. This person is either AFK or just started playing Minecraft for the first time and doesn't know how to move. Is this guy killing himself? He's just shooting arrows up. What? YouTubers be like, Minecraft, but if I touch the color blue, the video ends. All right, please load in a bad spot. Please load in a bad spot. Ah, oh, come on. This is totally unacceptable. In the ocean is perfect. A little bit of this. Oh my God, guys. What is this spawn? This is so insanely unlucky. Oh my God. What am I going to do? Mm, I actually haven't thought this far ahead.
Ah! My god, guys, this spawn is crazy. But hey, at least we have a tree so I can get some wood. All right, now let's make a boat and find some land. Oh no, the trident guy is gonna kill me. No, this can't happen. I could easily row away, but for some reason I seem to have frozen up. Oh no, this is so sad. Ah, man. Oh well. It is now the month of December and my character is now dead. So we're gonna be a little festive. Minecraft, but the entire world is powdered snow. So much powdered snow that you can't even see the village. So here we have it all here. All powdered snow, as you can see. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, guys. This is a cave dweller. Now, these are six different cave dwellers all in the same world. These mobs spawn in caves, and some of them spawn on the surface, and they make Minecraft absolutely terrifying. The way they creep up on you while you're mining, the ambient sounds that constantly get played, and the random noises are scary enough, but these mobs also do a ton of damage. I placed all six of these dwellers in one world, and the world is a caves only world. I started from nothing and my goal was to reach the surface but the surface was entirely obsidian so i needed to from nothing get a diamond pickaxe and escape the caves without dying in hardcore mode if you want to check out the full video you can here on the channel i saw this player towering up and had to know what he was up to especially when i saw he was heading towards some random dripstone blocks what was he cooking was this guy a genius was this albert einstein reincarnated these were all questions that popped into my mind when I saw this player and then he literally just walked off the edge and died I was so confused he then got geared up again and I thought maybe I would see the plan get put in motion but he killed a sheep N not not very easily but the sheep died then he left the server meanwhile you have this player who built an entire warden farm does this look weird to you? Does this door look a little off? Well, it is. This is what doors normally look like. There's nothing modeled on the inside, but in this one snapshot of Minecraft, for some reason, yes, this is the only snapshot in the game where you can see this, the doors are fully modeled on the inside. This is snapshot 14W32D and the very next snapshot they changed the doors back to the way they were before they probably scrapped this idea because it could lag for some players but i always find it really funny when they change something then in the very next snapshot they change it back imagine you desperately need grass but don't have a way to get it or at least you don't think you have a way to get it if you don't have any existing grass around it's normally impossible to get new grass but if you run into this problem there is only one way to get grass in a situation like this switch to the 2023 april fool snapshot wait till you get the bouncy castle option enable it farm slime to make a slime block bounce on the slime block until you reach the moon find one of these rovers step on the pressure plate to create this weird looking thing search the shulker boxes on the newly created structure and some will have grass blocks then you just head back to earth yep this is the only way you can get grass. Trust me, I hate making videos about this, and I hope this is the last one I do, but I have to set the record straight because my comment section is ridiculous. So I made this video about how in one snapshot of Minecraft, the doors were modeled on the inside. But a few days before my video, Camman18 made a video about this same subject. Hmm, this looks like I was caught red-handed and I'm a copycat. No. This was the top post on the Minecraft subreddit for a week. I guess we both just look at the Reddit sometimes. Believe it or not, just because someone is a big YouTuber doesn't mean they come up with every video idea themselves. This is pretty sad for me to admit, but I just found out about a mechanic in Minecraft that I think I'm the only person who was not aware of this. I've made over 350 videos about this game and never knew this. So in my recent Cave Dweller video, I got to half a heart and didn't have any food. So I got lucky and found 
found some glow berries and when I ate them, I stopped moving so my hunger didn't continue to go down, but my hunger still went down. I was so confused by this, I thought glow berries gave some weird effect where they can't regenerate your health all the way and reduce your hunger when you don't move, but when I read the comments and noticed how I was getting roasted, I realized that regenerating hearts makes you lose hunger. I have a problem. I don't know how to survive in this world. I downloaded a bunch of mods to change Minecraft into a zombie apocalypse including guns, traps, new armor, weapons, even NPCs around the world that will join my crew and help me fight, but I don't think this is enough. It takes a few good resources to make all these items, but the zombies are so difficult that it's nearly impossible to even get the resources to make these. These zombies spawn in groups, don't burn in daylight, can see the player from a long distance, climb up walls, evolve, infect the passive mobs so even they're dangerous, but they can also break blocks to reach you and so much more. This is the most difficult zombie apocalypse mod pack. I tried surviving for as long as possible and if you want to see me take on a realistic zombie apocalypse, you can here on the channel. I saw this post saying that the on fire screen effect is the worst screen effect in gaming and I was so surprised by this because this to me is way worse. This actually hurts to look at. But this player is on bedrock and wow that is actually horrible. It takes up like 90% of the screen and in Java it does not do this at all. In Java when you're on fire it takes up maybe 50% of your screen and you're still able to see fairly well but this? Yeah, this is bad. No Fear 1337 just got the Minecraft speedrun world record with a time of 7 minutes and 24 seconds. Previously, it was held by Xylanox with a time of 7 minutes 45 seconds. No Fear spawns in next to a buried treasure that contains iron, gold, and food, then immediately starts getting wood. He makes tools, a bucket, shears for blocks, and a boat. He then makes the nether portal out of ruined portal in under 2 minutes, then runs for 30 seconds to the bastion to get pearls from trades. After getting enough pearls, he throws a pearl towards the direction of the fortress, then lowers his render distance to teleport later. After getting enough obsidian for a new portal, he raises his render to activate the pearl. At the fortress, he kills Blaze, and with only 5 rods, he goes back to the overworld and triangulates where the stronghold is and makes a portal in the nether leading to it. In the end, he builds super high up and kills the dragon with beds in 7 minutes and 24 seconds. The elytra is the best mode of transportation in all of my Minecraft, but what happens when so many players join a server, get elytras, and make it so that to get an elytra you'd have to be lucky enough to find an end city that hasn't been looted by other players? I tried answering this question. There were no elytras on the auction house so I couldn't get them from there so I could either try to find an end city or TP trap some players and hopefully get one. I didn't have a lot of money for a good TP trap so I tried my luck in the end. The end was absolutely destroyed and filled with other players trying to kill me, and it worked. They did kill me. And again, and again, and again, and again. This happened for a long time. A player actually gave me an elytra and rockets to help me escape, and even after exploring 10,000 blocks past end spawn, I couldn't find an unlooted end city. <sighs> this is pretty hard. So good luck if you want to get an elytra. You can bring the Ender Dragon to the Overworld in Vanilla Survival. You have to kill the first dragon and spam a bunch of sand in the End Portal. If you then go back to the Overworld into 0 0, you will see a giant sand tower like this. This tower determines what height the dragon will be at. At the top, you'll want to place an End Stone block. After this, go back to the End and scaffold to Y200 and place down blocks Endermen won't spawn on and build this with End Stone blocks being placed on these green dots. Credit to Shulkercraft for this. Now remove your scaffolding and respawn the dragon, destroy every crystal except one, then when the dragon is down here, destroy the last crystal and the dragon is stuck. Now you need to use a flying machine to push the dragon to this portal and a new one will spawn. Kill it, opening the main portal, and the previous dragon will now fly to the main island. You can now push this dragon into the main portal and it will duplicate itself in the overworld. And that's it. If you want a more detailed version, you can check out Shulkercraft's video. The wolf armor is here and the wolf can't even 
survive one TNT. Hmm, yeah. I wanted this to win the vote, by the way. Better than extended building, though, when we already have scaffolding and the long-lost technique of simply jumping. This is exactly what I expected, though. Nothing too crazy health-wise, but wow. These wolves are really weak. They take forever to even kill a zombie. You breed them with spider eyes, and you can use a brush to get skew, and this is how you craft the wolf armor. You can also dye it to make your pet look like a based purple enjoyer. This also makes me wonder if we'll ever see the other two mobs again, or if they're lost in history like the rest. But overall, it's not bad. Nothing I think most people will really use, but it's a cool little update. I just found the most terrifying video ever. One that will make any scary video you've seen before look minuscule in comparison. Even scarier than my Hero Brian video. You know, quick shameless plug. What I'm about to show you is a super old Hero Brian sighting. Oh, you have been warned. <coughs> That is the scream of a terrified person who definitely had Herobrine behind him and not his friend with the Herobrine skin. The funniest traps in Minecraft to me are when everything is calm and peaceful, then one millisecond later all hell breaks loose and the player goes flying in the air awaiting their death. But how is this possible? So skulk sensors can't sense sound through wool, so if you play some wool like this, then a bunch of TNT minecarts here, then finally covering up the hole and placing a skulk sensor, the sensor will only be activated if the player stands directly above the sensor. And as you can see, this would instantly kill someone with full netherite armor on. So this right here is the greatest trap of all time. Death fell accident waters, what most people would say is the hardest death message to get, believed to be achieved by making a 24 block high pillar, water logging a block at the bottom, placing a minecart, hooking it up to a piston that pushes the minecart, getting in the minecart, then falling on the water. But there is a way less complicated way to get this exact same death message. It requires one pearl, one water bucket, and one wall of any block you want. Throw the pearl at the wall, place the water at your feet, there we go. Death fell accident water, way easier. This is the Wither Storm, the hardest boss mod in Minecraft that gradually grows and tracks you down and destroys the world around you, and I tried defeating it. At the end of its fifth phase, it spawns this mob that's a super hard boss fight itself with fireball attacks, arrow attacks, a whole jumping phase. It also pulls you towards it while spawning other mobs, and you have to defeat it all while the map is being destroyed around you you by the wither storm. When you kill this boss, it'll give you an item to craft a bomb to make a hole in the wither storm's head, and you can crawl in and go through another set of challenges to finally defeat it. It's overall incredibly hard, and the full video is up on the channel and linked in the comments. So the new snapshot lets you change the size of other mobs and yourself, which is pretty cool because people are making mini parkour courses with this where your character goes between super tight areas and blocks that you're normally not supposed to go through. You you can also make the mobs huge and yourself huge. You can also make the zombie big now and have it actually be able to run towards you since the giant mob that's been in the game for years has no AI. So this is a nice command for map makers. Now Mojang, we uh... We, we need a new dimension next. The Red Sun in Minecraft. This is a trend I just heard about, but it's actually really popular. As you can see, this guy made a ton of videos about it. A seemingly endless amount of videos, actually. Jesus, it never ends. But it's apparently a real seed in Minecraft that a night a giant red sun with eyes and teeth dripping blood comes out and yeah, it's, it's fake, obviously. But I can appreciate some fake content. Wow. 10 million views. I think I need to change my content. Guys, in today's video, we're going to be exploring the red sun seed. Oh my God, it's real. Look at the red sun. 
No way! Did you know I have a Spanish YouTube channel? I didn't know that either, actually, because I don't own the channel. Someone let me know that the Spanish YouTuber copies all of my videos exactly down to what I say in the video. I made this, he makes that. 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 Actually, in his last 10 videos, eight of them are direct copies of mine. I'm not salty about this, by the way. I just think it's pretty funny. But it does kind of suck, because he is bigger than me and he reposts the videos on TikTok where he gets way more views than I do. The funniest one of these to me is a video I made talking about this feature I just learned after making 350 videos about Minecraft. And of course he made that video too. But what was weird was that in my video, I learned the feature from a long form video I linked to the short. And oh look, he has a long video linked too. And yes, this long video is a copy of my long video as well. So this makes me wonder, will he copy this video?